Heinrich Ibsen's A Doll's House, adapted by Nicholas Michael Bashor. Act One. A cozy-looking room is furnished comfortably and tastefully, but not extravagantly. A sofa, armchairs, a table and accents, and a rocking chair. An upright piano sits at the back. Copper engravings hang on the walls. A cabinet is full with porcelain and other small objects, and a small bookcase is lined with gilded, leather-bound books. The floors are carpeted, and a warm fire burns in the fireplace. It's Christmas Eve. A doorbell Shortly after, Helena, the maid, enters from the kitchen and opens the front door, revealing Nora, who strolls humming a tune and feeling cheerful. She's wearing a coat and carrying quite a few packages, which she lays on the table. She leaves the front door open behind her, and through it, we see a porter carrying a Christmas tree and a basket, which she gives to Helena, who takes it and goes back into the kitchen. <sighs> Hide the Christmas tree carefully, Helena. Make sure the children don't see it until it's been decorated tonight. <laughs> she turns to the porter and takes out her purse. Oh, here. Here's a chrome. Uh, no, no, keep the change. <laughs> The porter thanks her and leaves. She shuts the door to the foyer and laughs to herself as she takes off her coat. She takes a bag of macaroons from her pocket and eats one or two and tiptoes cautiously to Torvald's office door and listens. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's home. Still humming, she goes to the table and starts going through the packages. Every now and then, she takes a bite from a macaroon. Torvald calls out from inside his office. Is that a goldfinch tweeting out there? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> is there a little kitten bouncing around? Yeah. And when did this kitten come home? Just now. <laughs> she puts the bag of macaroons back in her pocket and wipes her mouth. Come here, Torvald, come and see what I bought. Uh, not now. A second later, he opens his door and looks out into the room, pen still in hand. Did you say bought all these things? Has this little goldfinch been out wasting money again? Yes, Torvald, but this year we really can let loose a little. This is the first Christmas where we haven't had to be thrifty. That doesn't mean we can start throwing money around. Come on, Torvald. We can throw a little money around now, can't we? Just a teeny tiny bit. Well, after all, you're going to have a large salary and make tons and tons of money. Yes. After the new year, and then it'll be a whole quarter before I'm even paid. Three months. Whatever. I'm sure we can borrow until then. Uh, Nora! He goes to her and jokingly tweaks her ear. Being a little frivolous again, are we? I imagine now that I borrowed a thousand kroner today, and you spent it all Christmas week, and then on New Year's Eve, a brick falls on my head, kills oh, me. Oh, come and... on! Don't say ugly things like that! Uh, still. Imagine that did happen. What the? If something that horrible did happen, I don't think it would make much of a difference if I owed any money. Okay, but what about the people I borrowed it from? <laughs> people you... Who cares about them? They're strangers. Nora, Nora, thou art a woman. Hmm. Uh, no, but seriously, Nora. You know what I think about all this. No debt. Never borrow. A home built on a foundation of borrowing and debt is nothing more than an ugly prison. We held out pretty well so far, and we'll just have to keep doing what we've been doing, as long as we need to. She shuffles to the fireplace. Yeah, yeah whatever you want, Torvald. He follows her. Now, now, this little goldfinch shouldn't be drooping her wings. What? Is Kitten pouting now? Laura? Do you think I have here? Money? <laughs> there you go. He hands her some cash. Oh, God, of course I know how much money you need at Christmas. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Torvald, I promise I will make sure this lasts me a long time. <laughs> well, it's going to have to. <laughs> yes, yes, it will. But first, come here and let me show you everything I got. And also cheap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some new outfits and a sword for Yvar, a horse and a trumpet for Bob, and a doll with a bed for Emmy. <laughs> it's uh, pretty plain, but 
she'll break it up into a thousand pieces anyway. <laughs> oh, and I got some new dresses and scarves for the maids and Anne Marie. She really should have had a lot more. And what's in this one? Oh, no, 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 Torvald! You're not allowed to open that until tonight. <laughs> All right. But, but now tell me, you little spendthrift, what do you want for yourself? <laughs> Gosh, for me, I, I don't really think I want anything. Of course you do. Now, uh, tell me something uh, reasonable that you want. <sighs> no, I really can't think of anything. Unless... Torvald. <laughs> yes. She plays with the suit buttons without looking at him. If you really want to give me something I want, you could, I guess. Oh, come you know, on. Just say it. You could give me money, only what you can afford, and then one of these days I'll buy something for myself with it. Uh, Nora! Oh, please, please, honey. I'm begging you. I'll even wrap it up in some beautiful gold paper and put it on the Christmas tree. Now, wouldn't that be fun? What are those expensive little birds called that, that some people enjoy wasting money on? Yes, yes, gold finches, mm. I know. But please do this for me, Torvald, and then I'll have time to think about what I really need. Now, doesn't that sound... like Doesn't that make more sense? Uh, yeah. Yes, it, it does. And that's, of course, assuming you really did save the money I give you, and then really did use it to buy something for yourself. But if instead you end up spending it all on housekeeping and a countless number of useless things, then I'll just end up having to fork over even more money. No, really, Torvald. Uh, you can't deny it, Nora. He puts his arms around her waist. This little goldfinch is cute, but she sure spends a whole lot of money. It's amazing how expensive it is for a man to keep a goldfinch these days. How can you even say that to me? Come on. I really try to save everything I can. <laughs> That's very true. Everything you can. The trouble is you can't save anything. <sighs> okay. You don't have a clue how many expenses goldfinches and kittens have, Torvald. You're a strange little thing, Nora. <laughs> just like your father, you always try to get your hands on some money. Uh, but as soon as you have it, it just slips right through your fingers. You never know where it went. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to take you as you are. After all, it is in the blood. Yes, yes, it's true. Those things are inherited. Hmm. Well, I wish I inherited a lot more of Dad's qualities. And I wouldn't want you to be any different than exactly how you are, my sweet little <laughs> goldfinch. But you know, it just occurred to me that you're looking a little... How should I say this? A little suspicious today. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> you really do. Here, uh, look at me. <laughs> well? Miss Sweet Tooth hasn't been on a rampage through town today, has she? <laughs> no. Why would you even ask that? Huh. Uh, so Miss Sweet Tooth uh, did make a little detour to the bakery? No, I can assure you, Torvald. Didn't nibble on some jam? No. Definitely not. Not even gnawed on a macaroon or two? <laughs> now, Torvald, honestly! Well, well, well. You know I'm only joking, right? She coyly moves away from him. <sighs> it really wouldn't even occur to me to do something you didn't want me to. No, I know that. Besides, you did give me your word. He walks up to her. Well, keep your little Christmas surprises to yourself, darling. Everything will be revealed this evening by the light of the Christmas tree. Oh, uh, did you remember to invite Dr. Rank? Uh, no, but there's really no need. Obviously, he knows he has an open invitation, but I can still ask him when he stops by this afternoon. You know, I even ordered some excellent wine. Mm. Uh, Nora, <laughs> you, you just can't imagine how much I'm looking forward to tonight. Me too. Not to mention how excited the kids will be, Torvald. You know, it feels really amazing to finally have a perfectly steady job and a large enough income. <sighs> kind of it's delightful to think about, isn't it? <laughs> Do you remember right. last Christmas? For three whole weeks, you shut yourself up every night until way past midnight, making ornaments for the Christmas tree and all <laughs> kinds of other spectacular things you wanted to surprise us with. It was three of the most boring weeks of my entire life. <laughs> it wasn't so boring for me. Uh, but you have to admit, 
the end result was a little shabby. <laughs> about that again? How was I supposed to know the cat would run in and tear everything apart? Of course you wouldn't have known, my poor little Nora. You had the best intentions to make us all happy, and that's what matters. But it's definitely a good thing that our hard times are finally over. It really is divine. This time I don't need to sit here and be bored all alone, and you don't need to ruin those precious eyes and your pretty little hands. <laughs> no, adorable, I don't now, do I? Oh, it's so divinely exquisite to hear you say that! Uh, no, no. Let me tell you how I've been thinking we should arrange the furniture around here. As soon as Christmas is over, I would like A to... A bell rings in the foyer. <sighs> Doorbell. She quickly tidies up around the room a little. Oh, someone's coming. What a pain. Uh, if it's a visitor, remember. I'm not at home. Helena comes to the door. There's a woman here asking to see you, Mrs. Helmer. A stranger. She didn't give her name. A stranger? Uh, okay, well, ask her to come in. The doctor's also here to see you, Mr. Helmer. He got here at the same time. Did he go straight to my office? Yes, he did. Torvald goes to his office. Helena ushers in Mrs. Christine Linda, who's in her traveling clothes, then goes out and shuts the door. <laughs> How are you, Nora? How are you? You probably don't recognize me. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I do. Oh, yes, of course, Christine! Oh, is that really you? <laughs> yep, it's me. <laughs> Christine! I can't believe I almost didn't recognize you! But then how could I? Oh, Christine, you've changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have in nine, ten long years. <laughs> Has it really been that long since we last saw each other? Well, I guess it has. <laughs> These past eight years have definitely been a happy time for me, let me tell you. <laughs> but now you're here in town. Did you take a long trip right in the middle of winter? That's good to see of you. I got in on the steamer early this morning. Well, to have a little fun during Christmas, of course. I hold it fine. We'll have so much fun together. But please, please, take off your coat. You're not cold, I hope. Why don't we warm up by the fireplace, huh? We can be all cozy. No, no, please sit in the armchair. I'll take the rocking chair. <laughs> Nora helps Christine with her coat, and they sit by the fire. She then takes Christine's hands in hers, looks closely at her face, and smiles. Mm, now you're looking like your old self again. <laughs> it was just in that first moment. You're a little paler, Christine, and maybe a bit thinner. Oh, I'm much, much older, Nora. <laughs> mm, okay, maybe a little older. Very, very little. <laughs> Definitely not much. Uh, how inconsiderate of me, just sitting here chatting away like this. Uh, Christine, please forgive me. I'll forgive you for what? For thing. You're a widow now. Yeah, it's been three years. So I heard, I read it in the papers... Please believe me, Christine. I meant to write you at the time, but I kept putting it off, and then something else always got in the way. I, I, I totally understand. <laughs> no, it was pretty bad on my part. You poor thing, you must have been through so much. And he really left you nothing to live on? No. And, and no children? <laughs> nope. Nothing at all, then? Not even a sense of grief or sorrow to keep me warm at night. But, Christine, how is that even possible? It, it happens sometimes, Nora. So, you're pretty much alone. God, that must be awful. I have three exquisite kids. I introduced them, but they're out with their nanny. Well, now you have to tell me all about you. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to hear about you. Uh, no, no, you first. I can't be selfish today. Today, I only want to think about you and your needs. Well... Okay, there is one thing I do want to tell you. Did you hear we just had an incredible bit of good news? No, really? If you can believe it, my husband has been made the director of the commercial bank. <laughs> Your husband? Oh, that is good news. It's incredible. An attorney's income is so unreliable these days, especially if he's only willing to take on the best of the best. And of course, those are the only clients that Torvald's been willing to accept. And I completely agree with him. You wouldn't believe just how happy we are. 
He's starting his work at the commercial bank right after the new year. And then he'll have a huge salary and lots of commissions. <laughs> we can now live just very differently than we used to. We can do exactly what we want, Christine. I just feel so light and happy. <laughs> It'll be so exquisite to have a ton of money and not have to worry at all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it would be exquisite to have what one needs. No, no, not just what one needs, but so much money. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, Nora, you haven't changed a bit, have you? <laughs> oh, in our school, you were always a little bit extravagant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Torvald says now. But you know, Nora, Nora, isn't as silly as you think. No, uh... We really haven't been in a position for me to be extravagant. We've actually both had to work. Oh, you too? Well, just, you know, little things. So needlework, crocheting, embroidery, that kind of stuff. Among other things. <laughs> Did you know Torvald resigned from his post at the civil service when we got married. There were no prospects for promotion there, and he had to try and earn more than he did before. But during that first year, he burned himself out. He had to make money any which way he could, and he would work very early and very late. But in the end, he couldn't handle it and got seriously sick. And the doctors told me that he needed to take a sabbatical down south. Yeah, you spent a whole year in Italy, didn't you? Mm -hmm, we did. And it wasn't exactly easy to get away, I can tell you that much. It was right after Avar was born, but of course we had to go. <laughs> it was such a divinely exquisite trip, and it saved Torvald's life. But it cost a fortune, Christine. <laughs> well, I can imagine. 4,800 kroner. It's a whole lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. And in emergencies like that, it's fortunate to have that money. Uh, yeah, well, if you want to know, we got it from my dad, of course. Oh, oh, I see. That was right around the time he died, wasn't it? It was, and I couldn't even go and be there with him, you know, nurse him back to health. I was expecting of our birth at any minute, and I had my poor sick Torvald to take care of. My precious father. I never saw him again, Christine. It was the hardest thing I've experienced in my whole marriage. I knew you were very fond of him. So then you went off to Italy? <sighs> yeah, well, we had the money then, and the doctors insisted that we go, so we left a month later. And your husband came back completely cured? Right as rain. <laughs> <laughs> but then, well, the doctor? What doctor? Well, I thought the man who got here at the same time as, as me was a, a doctor. Oh, yeah, that's Dr. Rang, but he doesn't come here on house calls. He's our closest friend and drops by at least once a day. No, Torvald hasn't been sick at all since then, and our kids are strong and healthy, and so am I. Nora jumps up and claps her hands in content. God, Christine, it is divinely exquisite to be alive and happy. <laughs> oh, but it's so gross of me to just be talking about myself and my problems again. He sits on a nearby ottoman and rests her hands on Christine's knees. Please don't be annoyed with me. But tell me, is it really true you didn't love your husband? Like, why did you even marry him? He asked. My mother was alive at the time, but she was sick and, and helpless. And I had two young brothers to take care of, so it didn't seem responsible on my part to reject his offer. No, well, you probably did the right thing. Was he rich? I think he was fairly well off, but his business was unreliable. And when he died, it all fell apart and there was nothing left. And then? And then, then I had to move on and take any job I could find. A small shop at first and, and then a small school and so on. The last three years, it felt like a very long work day with no rest. Oh, but it's all over, Nora. My mom doesn't need me anymore now that she passed away. And, and the boys don't need me either. They're all grown up and they can take care of themselves. You must feel pretty relieved now that all of those... No, no that's... But I, I only feel like my life is, is indescribably empty. No one to live for anymore. She stands up in her restlessness. <laughs> that's, that's why I couldn't stand that life I had in that little town anymore. I, I'm hoping that it might be easier here to find something that'll they'll keep me busy and occupy my thoughts. <laughs> if only I could have a good fortune to find some regular work. 
office work of some kind. <laughs> yeah, Christine, that's, that's so strenuous. You already look exhausted. No, you're much better off going away to a spa. <laughs> oh, I don't have a father to give me money for a trip, Nora. <laughs> oh, don't be angry with me. No, it's, it's you who should be angry with, with me, Nora. It's, oh, the worst thing about being in my situation is, is that it floods your mind with so much bitterness. You have no one to work for, but still you somehow find yourself constantly busy and, and always on edge, waiting for an opportunity to strike. You have to live, and so you become selfish. When you shared your good news with me, would you believe it? I was thrilled. Not so much for you, but for myself. What do you mean? Oh, I see. You mean that maybe Torvald might be able to help you out? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Well, so he will, Christine. Just leave it to me. I'll be very subtle about it. I'll have to come up with something that'll put him in a very good mood. Now, Christine, <laughs> I really, really want to be able to help you with this. Oh, it's so, so very nice of you to be so excited about helping me. Particularly nice for someone who knows so little about the troubles and hardships of this life. Uh, I know so little about? Oh, my God. Oh, okay, sure. Small household chores and that type of thing. You're practically a kid, Nora. Nora shakes her head and walks away from her. <sighs> you don't have to be so condescending about it. Condescending? You're just like the others. <laughs> they all think I'm no good at doing anything serious. That oh, come on I now. haven't accomplished anything in this world. So, Nora, honey, you just told me about all your troubles. Whatever! That was only a taste. She walks to Christine and whispers. I haven't told you about the big one. The big one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? You underestimate me, Christine, but you shouldn't. You're probably proud that you worked so hard and so long for your mother. Hmm? I certainly don't underestimate anybody. But it's true. I am both proud and happy to have worked so hard and so long to keep my mother comfortable in her final years. Okay. And you're also proud of what you've done for your brothers? I think I earned the right to be. I think so too. Well then, how about this? I also have something that makes me proud and happy. I don't, I don't doubt that. But what exactly do you mean? Come here. I don't want Torval to hear. <laughs> he can't know no matter what. No one in the world can know Christine except for you. Well, what is it? Come here. She sits on the sofa and pulls Christine down next to her. I saved Torvald's life. Saved? <laughs> what do you mean, saved? I already told you about our sabbatical in Italy. The truth is, Torvald would have died if he hadn't gone there. Yeah, but your you? father gave you the money for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what Torvald and everyone else think, but... Um, but? Dad didn't give us anything. I got the money. You? The whole amount? Mm-hmm. 4,800 kroner. What do you think about that? Yeah, but N Nora, how is that possible? Did you win the lottery? <laughs> the lottery? What kind of talent would that have taken? When did you get it from then? Nora hums and smiles mysteriously. <laughs> because you couldn't have borrowed it. Couldn't I? Why not? No, a wife can't borrow without her husband's consent. But if it's a wife who happens to be a bit business savvy, a, a wife who knows how to be a bit shrewd. Oh, okay, Nora, I, I'm not following you at all. <laughs> well, you don't need to. <laughs> I never <laughs> said I borrowed the money. Maybe I got it some other way. Maybe I got it from a secret admirer. <laughs> and you're as attractive as I am. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> I think you're interested, have I, Christine? You haven't been reckless, have you? Is it reckless to save your husband's life? I think it would be reckless if, without his knowledge, you oh, But he just couldn't know anything. God, how do you not get that? He couldn't even know how bad his health had gotten. The doctors came to me and told me that his life was in danger. And the only thing that would save him was a long sabbatical down south. I mean, do you think I didn't try, first of all, to get him to do it by thinking it was all for me? I told him how exquisite it would be for me to travel abroad like all the other young wives. I 
cried and I begged. I told him he should consider the situation I was in and that he should be kind and generous to me. <laughs> I even hinted that he should take out a loan, but that basically made him livid. He <laughs> called me frivolous and said it was his duty as a husband not to indulge my whims and fantasies. <laughs> this exact words, I believe. Well, then I thought well, someone needs to save him, so I figured out a way. And your husband didn't learn from your dad that the money didn't really come from him? No, never. <laughs> Dad died around the same time. I really thought about telling him about it and begging him not to tell anyone, but at that point he'd gotten so sick, and uh, unfortunately, that never became necessary. And you've never trusted your husband with your secret sins? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> How uh, painful and humiliating would it be for Torvald with his masculine pride to know that he owed me anything? It would disrupt the entire balance of our relationship, and our beautiful, happy home wouldn't be what it is. So you'll never tell him? Uh, maybe. Well, someday, after a long time, when I'm not as pretty as I am now. <laughs> I don't laugh! And, you know, when Torvald doesn't adore me as much as he does now. When he doesn't take pleasure anymore in having me dance and act and dress up in costumes for him. Well, that's when it might be good to have something like that in my pocket. <laughs> Listen to me Babylon. That time is never going to come. So, what do you think of my big secret, Christine? Hmm? Would you now agree that I'm also good for something? And by the way, you wouldn't believe how much anxiety this whole thing has given me. It definitely hasn't been easy for me to keep up with all the obligations that come with this loan. Okay, let me tell you. In the business world, there are things called quarterly interest and installments. It's not exactly the easiest thing to manage them. I had to save a little here and there, whatever I could. I really couldn't skim much off the household budget since Torvald expects to live well. And I'm definitely not going to let my kids walk around all poorly dressed either. So I've also had to spend every last bit of the money he gives me for their expenses. Sweet little things. So, so it all had to come out of your own allowance? Yeah, of course. But then again, I was also in the best position to do that without anyone suspecting anything. Whenever Torvald gave me money for new dresses and things like that, I never spent more than half of it. I'd always buy the simplest and cheapest things. Well, thank God that basically anything looks good on me. <laughs> well, that's the only reason Torvald's never really noticed. But it's been very hard on me, Christine. Because, well, it's just so exquisite to be really well-dressed, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, I also found other ways of making money. Uh, last winter, I was lucky enough to get a lot of copying work, so I locked myself up and sat writing every night until way past midnight. And I get so tired. got so tired, Christine. But still, it was kind of fun to sit there working and earning money. <laughs> I almost felt like a man. <laughs> but how much have you been able to pay off that way? Um, I can't say exactly. It's pretty hard keeping track of these kinds of things. You no, know, I can only say that I paid every last bit that I could scrape together. I got fed up so many times. <laughs> Sometimes I'd sit here and think about a rich old man who fell in love with me, <laughs> that he died, and that when his will was read, it said in big letters, all my money shall be paid immediately and in cash to the gracious Mrs. Nora Helper. <laughs> Nora, honey, who would that be? Oh, oh, no, 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 she cannot, no. That's just a fantasy I made up in my head over and over when I couldn't think of any other way of making money. Like, with Torvald's new job, none of that matters now. I can just sit and be carefree. God, that's so exquisite to think about, Christine. Carefree, to be free from care, to be, to be able to play with the kids and keep a beautiful home and have everything just the way Torvald likes it. And just think spring is right around the corner with that big blue sky. Yeah, maybe we'll take a little trip, see the sea again. Oh. <laughs> it really is divine to be alive and happy. <laughs> a bell rings in the foyer. Oh, there's the doorbell. I, I probably should get going. Oh, no, please stay. No one's coming in here. It's probably for Torvald. Helena opens the door to the foyer and looks in. Excuse me, Mrs. Helmer. Uh, there's a man here asking to talk to the attorney. <laughs> to the bank director, you mean? Yes, to the bank director. But I wasn't sure since the doctor's in there with and him. And who is it? 
Niels Krogstad pops up from behind Helena and stands at the door. It's me, Mrs. Helmer. Christine flinches, trembles, and turns awkwardly to the window. Nora <laughs> takes a step towards Niels. Ooh. What is it? What do you want to talk to my husband about? Bank business, if you will. I do some work at the commercial bank, and I heard your husband's going to be your new boss, so... <laughs> it's got nothing to do no, with... No, just some business. Boring business. Absolutely nothing else. Hmm. Would you mind going to his office through the foyer, then? She waves him off indifferently, shuts the door, and then goes to stoke the fire in the fireplace. Nora, who was that man? Uh, a lawyer. His name is Nils Krogstad. Oh, so that really was him. <laughs> you know him? Oh, I used to, uh, several years ago. He used to be a solicitor's clerk in our town. Uh, yes, he was. He's changed a lot. I, uh, I think he was in a very unhappy marriage. Uh, he's a widower now, isn't he? Uh, with a few children. <laughs> ah, there now, nice and warm. Uh, they say he does all kinds of work now? Oh, yeah. Maybe he does. I wouldn't know anything about it. But let's not talk about work. It's so boring. Dr. Rank comes out of Torvald's office, speaking to the unseen Torvald before he closes the door. No, no, my friend. I don't wish to intrude. I'd rather visit with your wife for a while. He shuts the door and then notices Christine. Hey, excuse me. Uh, I'm afraid I'm intruding here, too. No, not at all. Dr. Rank, Christine Linda. Oh, oh yes, yes. I, I think I've heard your name mentioned here before uh, fairly often. <laughs> Didn't I pass you on the stairs? Uh, yes, I walked up a little too slow. I can't handle stairs very well. Uh, organs getting a little rotten already, huh? <laughs> oh, actually, it's the more the fact that I've been overworking myself. Nothing else? Well, then I assume you've come to town to join in on all the Christmas cheer. <laughs> I came to look for work. Is that the standard treatment for overwork? You have to live, Dr. Rank. Yes, that seems to be the general consensus nowadays. <laughs> now, Dr. Rank, you know you want to live. Yes, I really do. <laughs> no matter how miserable I feel, I want the agony to last as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, most of my medical patients feel the same way, as do those who are morally diseased. Oh, one of them, who has a bad case of it, by the way, is with Torvald right now. Christine sighs sadly. Hmm. Who are you talking about? A lawyer named Nils Krogstad. You don't know him, Nora. Rotten to the core. Oh, he also started talking about how badly he wants to live. <laughs> did he now? What did he want to talk to Torvald about? Oh, not a clue. I only heard it had something to do with the commercial bank. I didn't know that, no, that this lawyer, Krogstad, had anything to do with the commercial bank. Yeah, he has a minor job over there. Hmm. I don't know if where you come from, Miss Linda, they have the sort of people who go around sniffing enthusiastically, trying to catch a whiff of moral decay. And as soon as they found the source, put the sick bugger into some lucrative position for the sole purpose of keeping an eye on him. Oh, the healthy ones have to wait out in the cold. Well, it's the sick who have more of a need to be brought in and taken care of. <laughs> there you have it. That's the mentality that's turning society into an insane asylum. Nora, who had been absorbed in her thoughts, <laughs> breaks out into stifled giggling and claps her hands. Now, why are you laughing at that? Do you even know what society's all about? Oh, gosh. Why would I care about boring society? I'm laughing at something else, something really funny. <laughs> Tell me. Dr. Rank, are all the employees at the commercial bank now dependent on Torvald? Oh, is that what you find really funny? <laughs> no, never mind, never mind. <laughs> she walks aimlessly around the room. <laughs> Although it is really funny that we have, that Torvald has so much power over so many people now. She <laughs> takes the bag of macaroons from her pocket. Dr. Rank, would you care for a little macaroon? A macaroon? I thought they were banned around here. Uh, uh, yes, but Christine gave me these. <laughs> what? 
I, I did. Now, don't worry. There's no way you could have known that Torvald had banned them. If you want to know, he's just afraid they'll rot my beautiful teeth. <laughs> but I, one couldn't hurt. Isn't that right, Dr. Rank? <laughs> Here you go. She pops a macaroon into Rank's mouth. <laughs> you know, you too, Christine. And while we're at it, I guess I'll have one for myself. Just a tiny one. Okay, maybe two. <laughs> she gives Christine a macaroon and takes one or two for herself while continuing to walk aimlessly around the room. Okay, now I feel really happy. <laughs> There's only one thing left in the world that I'd absolutely love to do. Oh? Well, what is it? Mm, I have this incredible urge to say something in front of Torvald. <laughs> Why can't you say it? No, I, I really can't. It's so gross. Gross? Well, then I wouldn't advise you to say it, but uh, <laughs> maybe you can tell us. What do you have an incredible urge to say in front of Torvald? <laughs> I have an incredible urge to say, damn it all to hell. <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, well, here's your chance. Sounds like he's coming. She hides the bag back in her pocket and hastily <laughs> gestures to them to be quiet. Torvald comes out of his office with his coat over his arm and a hat in his hand. So, Torvald, honey, did you get rid of him? Uh, yes, he just left. Then let me introduce you. This is Christine. She just got into town. Uh, Christine? Uh, sorry, but I don't know... Uh, uh, Linda, honey. Christine Linda? Oh, of course. A, a childhood friend of my wife's, I assume. Yes, we've known each other since then. And imagine, she took a long trip just to see you. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, well, not, not really. Christine is extremely good at office work, and she's very anxious to work under the guidance of a capable man and learn even more than she already does. Uh, and very I... practical, Christine. <laughs> and when she heard that you're now the new director of the commercial bank, uh, through a telegram, yes, <laughs> she came here quick as she could. And, Torvald, I'm sure you'll be able to do something for her. Won't you? For me? I mean, it's not entirely out of the question. I, I assume you're widowed, Christine. Y yes. And you have experience doing office work? Oh, yeah. Plenty. Uh, well, then it's very likely I can find a job for you. <laughs> see? See? Uh, you actually arrived at a very opportune moment, Christine. Oh, Wow, how can I thank you? Uh, there's no need, uh, but for now, you'll have to excuse me. I... Oh, just a minute. I'll come with you. <clears throat> As Starfold puts on his coat, Rank takes his from the foyer and warms it by the fireplace. Mm, don't be too long, darling. Uh, one hour. No more than that. Oh, are you leaving too, Christine? Christine puts on her coat with Nora helping her. Yes, I have to go look for a room. Oh, well, then maybe we can walk down the street together. What a shame that we're so tight on space here. I'm afraid it's impossible for us to hold Oh, please, yeah. please don't worry about it. Bye, Nora. And thank you for everything. <laughs> Bye for now. Uh, of course, you are welcome to join us this evening. In fact, I insist. And you too, Dr. Rank. What do you say? If you're feeling well enough, just remember to bundle up. They all walk towards the front door while chatting with each other. Children's voices are heard coming from the stairwell. There they are! Oh, there they are! <laughs> she runs to open the door. Anne Marie, the nanny, stands there with the kids, and Nora bends down to kiss them. <laughs> come in, come in! Oh, you sweet little angels! Oh, Christine, look at them! Aren't they just divine? Well, let's not all just stand here in the draft. Come on, Christine. Only a mother can tolerate this place now. <laughs> Rank, Torvald, and Christine go downstairs as Anne Marie comes in with the kids. Nora closes the door to the foyer and goes to them. The kids talk to her simultaneously as she listens and replies. Ah, oh, you look so handsome. Look at those cheeks, red like apples and roses. <laughs> Did you have a lot of fun? That's awesome. Yeah. <gasps> You pulled Emmy and Bob on the sled? <laughs> yes, he did. At the same time. <laughs> oh, that's great. You are a very strong boy, you are. <laughs> oh, here, I'll take her for a little bit, Anne-Marie. My sweet little baby doll. Okay, go to mama. She Ooh. takes Emmy, the youngest <laughs> of the three, from Anne-Marie and dances with her. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, mama will dance with Bob, too. What? You made snowballs? <laughs> oh, I wish I'd been there, too. 
Uh, no, no, no. I'll change your outfits myself, Anne Marie. <laughs> Please let me do it. It's so much fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can go warm up in the nursery. You look like you're freezing. There's some hot coffee on the stove for you. <laughs> Thank you. Anne Marie goes into the nursery. Nora takes off the children's coats and hats and throws them wherever they may land as they all continue to talk to her simultaneously. Yes. Oh, is that so? A big dog came after you, but he didn't bite, did he? No. Dogs don't bite nice little baby dolls. Oh, no, no. Don't look at the packages of R. What are they? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no, no. It's something... Something scary. <laughs> Come here, let's play a game. What should we play, huh? Hide and seek? Oh, <laughs> hide and seek. Let's play hide and seek. Bob can hide first. Oh, oh, I have to hide first. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll hide first. She and the children laugh and play in and out of the room. She hides under the table, and the children rush in looking for her, but can't seem to find her. They hear her stifled laughter, <laughs> run to the table, and lift up the corner to find her there. They all <laughs> scream for joy. She crawls out as if trying to scare them, resulting in more screams of joy. <laughs> Meanwhile, there had been a knock at the front door. <laughs> but none of them noticed. The door to the foyer opens halfway, revealing Nils, who waits a little. The game continues. <laughs> That's not very nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. With a stifled uh, cry, she turns around and sits up to her knees. You. What do you want? Uh, sorry, the front door was open. Somebody must have forgot to close it. She stands up. My husband's not here, Nils. I know. Why are you here then? To talk to you. To me. <laughs> Want to go find Anne Marie? What? No, the strange man's not going to hurt me. When he leaves, we'll play another game, okay? Come she on. takes the children into the nursery and shuts the door after them. So, you want to talk to me? Yes, I do. Today, it's not the first of the month. No, it's Christmas Eve, and it'll be up to you just how merry your Christmas will be. What do you want? Today, I really can't afford to- Oh, no, any... we're, we're not going to talk about that just yet. Uh, this is about something else. Put a minute. <sighs> yes, okay, I do, but I still- <laughs> oh, Good, to... good. Uh, I was just sitting inside Olson's restaurant and saw your husband walking down the street. Yes. Uh, with a woman. And? <clears throat> May I be so bold as to ask, was it Christine Linda? It was. She's an old friend of yours, isn't she? She is, but I don't see why. Uh, I, I knew her too, back in the day. Yes, I'm aware. Are you now? Oh, so then you know all about it. I thought so. Um, then can I ask you without beating around the bush, will Christine be working at the bank? What exactly gives you the right to interrogate me like this, Nils? <laughs> You're nothing more than one of my husband's employees. But ask and you shall receive, right? Yes, Christine will have a job at the bank, and I helped her get it, Nils. I can tell you that much. Just as I thought. Nora paces around the room. You know, sometimes a person might have a little bit of influence. And just because that person happens to be a woman, it doesn't mean that you... When someone's just a subordinate, Nils, he should be really careful not to offend anyone who... How do I say this? Has a little bit of influence? Exactly. <laughs> um, Nora, would you be kind enough to use your, your little bit of influence on my behalf? Uh, what? What do you mean? Well, it, it would be so nice of you to make sure that I that I, I'm still able to keep my job at the bank as a subordinate. I don't know what you mean. Who wants to take your job away from you? Oh, come on now. There's no need to play dumb with me. Look, I definitely know why your friend's not very keen on the idea of running into me. And now, because of you, 
I also know who I can thank for being thrown out of a job. <laughs> I can promise you I have. Yes, yes, to. yes, yes. Long story short, now's the right time for you to use your little bit of influence. <laughs> but Nils, I don't have any influence. You don't? But I thought you just said that- Look, that's not what I meant. Seriously, now. Why would you think that I have that kind of power over my husband? <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. I've known your husband since our college days. I, I don't think Mr. Bank Director is any less pliable than any other man. If you disrespect my husband again, I swear I'll throw you out that door. The lady sure is brave. I'm not afraid of you anymore. As soon as the new year is here, I'll be free of this whole mess before you know it. Let me be very clear, Nora. I'm prepared to fight for this job like I would for my life. <laughs> sure seems that way. <laughs> And it's not even about the money. That's actually what I care about the least. There's another reason. And I guess I might as well tell you. I assume you know, like everyone else, that several years ago I was charged with, shall we say, an indiscretion? I may have heard something about that. It never went to court. But still, every door and window were close to me after that. So I started doing, well, you know. I had to do something. And honestly, I don't even think I'm the worst. But now I need to break free from all of that. My sons are growing up. And for their sake, I need to regain and win back as much respect as possible as I can in this town. This job at the bank was like that brand new start for me, a first step. But now your husband is trying to kick me down the stairs and back into the dirt. <laughs> but you have to believe me, Nils. It's not at all in my power to help you. But when there's a will, there's a way, Nora. You just don't have the will. But I have ways of changing that. Uh so what, you're, you're going to tell my husband that I owe you money? Hmm. Suppose I told him? Which should be pretty shameful of you. But to think that he would learn about my secret, a source of joy and pride for me. This hideous, clumsy way. God, that he would learn about it from you. It would put me in an uncomfortable position. Just uncomfortable? Fine, do it then. My husband can see for himself what a pathetic excuse for a man you are. Forget about keeping your job then. What I meant was, you're only worried about being uncomfortable at home? If my husband does find out, you know he'll pay you everything I still owe, and then you'll be out of our lives completely. He takes a step towards her. Look, Nora, either your memory is very foggy, or you clearly have no idea how this whole business works. So why don't I shed a little light on your situation? What do you mean? When your husband was sick, you came to me to borrow 4,800 kronen. I didn't know where else to go. And I promised you to get you that amount. You sure did. I promised to get you that amount with certain conditions. Seems to me that you were so focused on your husband's health and so anxious to get the money that you may not have paid enough attention to said conditions. So why don't I remind you? If you remember, I, I told you that to get you the money, I would need to drop a, a loan agreement, a bond. Which I signed. Yes, but... Below your signature, there were a few lines having to do with um, naming your father as the co-signer for the loan. Those lines your father was supposed to have signed. Supposed to have? He did sign them. I had left the date line blank. That's to say your father should have written the date there himself when he signed the bond. You do remember that, don't you? Yes, I believe so. Then I gave it to you to send to your father by mail, yes? 
Yes. And obviously you did so pretty quickly because barely five or six days after that, you brought it back to me with your father's signature. And then I gave you the money. Mm, which I've been paying off on time. You have been, yes. But to stay on topic, it must have been a very difficult time for you, Nora, no? It was. Your father was very sick, wasn't he? He was dying. And he died not long after that? Yes. Tell me, Nora, do you by any chance remember the exact date that your father died? September 29th. That's right. I personally verified it. And so you see, that's why we seem to have a little discrepancy that I'm just not able to sort out. He takes out a piece of paper from his pocket and holds it out for Nora to see. A little discrepancy? I don't know what you're talking about. Your father what? died on September 29th, but see here? He dated his signature October 2nd. And doesn't that just seem so strange, Nora? She's tensely quiet. Uh, can you maybe help clear that up for me? She remains quiet. It's, it's also very interesting that the words October 2nd, as well as the year, don't seem to be written in your father's handwriting, but in one that I guess I could, I could recognize. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess it's possible that your father forgot to date and uh, to date his signature and, and someone else may have filled it in willy nilly before they knew that he had died. That there's really nothing wrong with that. It's it's the signature that actually matters, and whether it's genuine or not. Isn't that right, Nora? No answer. Was it really your father who signed this? Nora thinks for a moment, then throws her head up defiantly and glares at him. No, it wasn't. I signed his name. Well, how about that? Mm. And do you, are you aware of how dangerous a confession like that is? How so? You'll have the rest of your money soon. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question. Why didn't you just send the documents to your father? It wasn't possible. He was already very sick, and if I had asked him to sign it, I would have also had to tell him what the money was for. Given his health, I just couldn't bring myself to tell him that my husband's life was in danger. It just wasn't possible. Then it would have been better for you to just have given up on the whole thing. <laughs> no! Out of the question! That was to save my husband's life! I couldn't just give up on that! So it never occurred to you that you were committing fraud against me? <laughs> you weren't a part of my calculation. I barely even thought about you at all. I couldn't stand you or the heartless way you kept throwing obstacles in my way, even though you knew my husband's life was in danger. You obviously don't realize what kind of predicament you've gotten yourself into, but I can at least tell you that the that my indiscretion, the thing that cost me my entire reputation, wasn't any better or worse than what you have done here yourself. Yeah. You, you actually expect me to believe that you were bold enough to risk your own reputation just to save your wife's life? The law doesn't care about motives. <laughs> then it must be a pretty bad law. Bad or not, it's the law that you'd have to answer to if I present this in court. <laughs> this is unbelievable! You're, you're telling me that a daughter is not allowed to spare her dying father from grief and anxiety? That <laughs> a wife is not allowed to save her husband's life? I may not know much about the law, Nils, but I'm pretty sure that somewhere in there, those kinds of things are perfectly legal. You're not even aware of that, are you? And you claim to be a lawyer. You must be a pretty terrible one at that. <laughs> Maybe so. But at least when it comes to business, the kind that you and I have, you can bet I know and understand every last bit of it. Oh, well. 
do whatever you want. But let me tell you this. If I'm thrown out on the street, once again, I'll be looking for you to keep me company. He turns and exits through the foyer. Nora stands silently, buried in her thoughts. After a short while, she looks up and shakes her head. No, <laughs> no, he's he's just trying to scare me. <laughs> like I'm that naive. She begins to pick up the kids' jackets and hats that she'd thrown randomly on the floor. What? No, it's impossible. I I did it all out of love. The kids enter timidly from the nursery and ask whether the stranger had left yet. They want to play again. She talks to them as if nothing had happened since they left. Yes, darlings, he just left, but let's not tell anyone about the stranger, okay? Not even Daddy. No, no, sweetheart, I, I can't play now. I know, I promise, but I can't right now. I have so much work to do. Come on, my sweet little darlings. She nudges them gently back into the nursery, shuts the door, and goes to the sofa, where she picks up her embroidery and sits down absentmindedly, sewing a few stitches. After a bit, she stops and puts it down, gets up, goes to the door to the foyer, and calls out, Helena, bring the Christmas tree in! She goes to the table and opens a box containing decorations, but stops again. No, no, it's just not possible! Helena enters with the tree. Where should I put it, Mrs. Helmer? Uh, right over there. Busy with her thoughts, Nora points to the middle of the room without looking. And Helena sits the tree there. Should I get anything else for you? Uh, no, thank you, Helena. I, I have everything I need. Helena leaves. And Nora walks over to the tree and begins to decorate it. Let's see, we'll do a candle here, a little flower there. That disgusting man! No, 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 nope. <laughs> there's, there's nothing wrong. The tree will be exquisite. I'll do whatever you want, Torvald. I'll sing for you. I'll dance for you. Torvald comes in from the foyer with some documents under his arm. Mm, you're back already. <laughs> yes. W was someone just here? Uh, here? No. <laughs> it's odd. I just saw Nils going out the front. Did you? Oh, yes. I forgot. He was here for a bit. <laughs> Nora, I can see it in your eyes. Let me guess. He was just in here begging you to put in a good word for him. Yes. And not only were you supposed to make it look like you were doing it voluntarily, but also to hide the fact that he was even here. Did he ask you to do that, too? Yes, Torvald, but no. he had a very no, Nora, good... Nora, how can you even think of doing something like this? To have a conversation with him, uh, promise him that you'd do something for him, and, and on top of that, to lie to me about it. <laughs> lie? I... You just told me to my face that no one was here. My little goldfinch should never do that again. A good goldfinch only sings flawlessly, never a false note. He puts his arms around her waist. Don't you agree? Yes, that's what I thought. Now... Why don't we forget all about it? He lets her go, walks over to the fireplace, and sits down to look through his documents. Nora goes back to decorating the Christmas tree. It's so warm and cozy in here. Torvald! <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes? I'm really looking forward to the masquerade party at the Stenborgs the day after tomorrow. And I'm really curious to see what costume you'll be surprising me with. Ah, oh, that stupid thing. <laughs> what do you mean? I just can't think of anything that's good enough. Everything I come up with seems so trivial, so meaningless. So my little Nora has finally come to that realization. She playfully walks over to Torvald and stands behind him, putting her hands on the back of his chair and peeking over his shoulder. He doesn't pay her much attention. Are you particularly busy, Torvald? Well, I... Now, what are all those papers for? <laughs> bank business. Already? I just got authority from the retiring director to make some necessary changes to the staffing and business plan. I'll need to spend Christmas week working on that if I want everything to be all set in time for the new year. 
So that's my nails. Hmm? She leans against the back of his chair <laughs> and plays with his hair. If only you weren't so busy, I would have asked you for a huge favor, Torval. What huge favor? Oh, come on now, you can tell me. It's just that no one has more sophisticated taste than you, and I really want to look stunning at the masquerade party. Torvald, if only you could hold my hand and walk me through all the possible options. Ah, I know. so Little Miss Independence finally admitted she needs a man's help. Yes, Torvald, I really can't get anything done without your help. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. I'm sure we can figure something out. <laughs> that is so incredibly nice of you. He goes back to decorating the Christmas tree. A short pause. These uh, red flowers sure look gorgeous, don't they? Hmm. So, uh, out of curiosity, um, what exactly was so awful that this Mills Krogstad guy supposedly did? He forged signatures. Do you know what that means? Uh, maybe he did it out of you know genuine necessity. Uh, that, or like so many others, out of recklessness. I'm not so heartless that I would write someone off permanently just because of one bad decision, you know. No, you wouldn't, Torvald. Uh, plenty of guilty folks have been able to redeem themselves, uh, provided they confess their crime and accept their punishment. Uh, punishment? But that's not the path Nils chose. He got himself out of it through dishonesty and deceit, and that's why he's now morally bankrupt. Uh, but do you think it would, um... Just imagine how a guilty man like that has to lie and cheat all the time and with everybody. What a hypocrite he would have to be, maintaining a facade, uh, keeping a mask on all the time, even with those closest to him, his own wife and kids. And the kids. What's the worst part, Nora? Uh, how so? Because this smog of lies, infects, and rots every last corner of a home. Each breath a child takes in that environment is teeming with the germs of something so... ugly. She walks closer to him. A and you're sure about that? Darling, as an attorney, I saw it far too often. Almost everyone who was corrupted at an early age has had a liar for a mother. A how come it's only the mother? It's just that more often than not, it's been the mother. Although, of course, a bad father would have the same outcome. Every lawyer knows this, including Nils, and yet he still chose to poison his own children with lies and deception, and he's been doing so for years. That's why I say he's morally bankrupt. He holds out his hand to her. And that's why my sweet little Nora has to promise me never to vouch for him. All right? Uh, Let's shake on him. Oh, come on now. Let's shake on he g she gives him a somewhat weak handshake. He keeps her hand in his and smiles at her. And now it's official. I guarantee you, it would have been impossible for me to work with him anyway. I, I literally get physically ill when I'm around people like him. Nora takes her hand out of his mm. and goes to the opposite side of the Christmas tree. <sighs> have you noticed how hot it got in here? I still have so much to do. <laughs> Torval goes back to his chair and picks up his documents. Uh, yes, and I want to get through some of this work before dinner. Mm. And I also need to figure out what to do about your costume. Don't think I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I might even have something wrapped in gold paper to hang on the tree tonight. He puts his hand on Nora's head. My precious little goldfinch. Mm. He goes into his office and shuts the door. Nora thinks silently for a few seconds. No, no, it's not true. It's, it's impossible. It cannot be possible. Anne-Marie opens the door to the nursery. These little darlings are adorable. They're asking so politely if they can come and be with their mama. No, no, no I can't right now. Um, but please stay with them, Anne-Marie. All right, I'll keep them company. She smiles at Nora and shuts the door. Oh, the rest of our kids. Boys in our home. <laughs> no, that's not true. It's, there's no possible way that could ever be true.
Christmas Day. The Christmas tree has been moved to the corner by the piano, stripped of its ornaments, except for the burnt-down candles on its disheveled branches. Nora's coat and hat are draped on the sofa. She's alone and walking around nervously. She stops by the sofa and picks up her coat and then drops it again. Someone's coming. She goes to the door and listens. No, it's nobody. Of course no one's coming. It's Christmas Day. Probably not tomorrow either, but maybe. She opens the door and looks out into the foyer. Oh, nothing in the mailbox. No, what am I doing? Of course he's not going to go through with it. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. 
I have three little kids. Anne-Marie enters from the nursery, carrying a large box. Look what I finally found. Here's that box with all your costumes in it. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Please uh, leave it on the table. But they're not in the best shape, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wish I could just rub them up into a hundred thousand pieces. <laughs> oh, come on now. They're not that bad. It's an easy fix. Just have a little patience. Maybe I can get Christine to help. Go out again? In this nasty weather? You'll catch cold, <laughs> love, and get yourself sick. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen. How are the kids? And the poor little sweethearts are playing with their Christmas presents, but... Do they keep asking for me? Well, they're just used to having their mama all the time. Yeah, but Marie, soon I won't be able to spend as much time with them as I used to. Well, they're just toddlers. It's easy for them to get used to anything. You really think so? Do you think they'd forget their mom if she's gone forever? Good God! Gone forever? Yeah, Marie, there's something I've been meaning to ask you for a while. How did you ever have the heart to just leave your own child with strangers? I had to. It was the only way I could be your nanny. Uh, yeah, but how did you convince yourself to go through with it? What else would someone in my position have done when a rare good opportunity came along? You don't pass that up. A girl living in poverty, especially one who had gotten herself into that kind of trouble, would be so lucky. And it's not like her so-called father would have been much help. Do you, do you think she forgot about you? Oh, no, not at all. She actually stayed in touch. She wrote me when she was getting ready for her confirmation at church, and also when she got married. Nora hugs her. <sighs> Anne Marie, you were a great mother to me when I was young. My poor little Nora. To think I was the only mother you had. Mm, if my babies didn't have a mother, I'm sure you'd be. <laughs> what am I saying? She lets go of Anne Marie and opens the box. Uh, why don't you go play with the kids? I have to... We'll see tomorrow just how exquisite I'll look. <laughs> I'm sure there won't be anyone at the party who looks more exquisite than you, love. Anne-Marie goes into the nursery. Nora starts to unpack the box, but soon pushes it away from her. <sighs> if only I could go out. If only I could be sure that no one would come and that nothing would happen in the meantime. <sighs> Whatever. I don't think about it. I can't just... No one's coming. Nothing will happen. Exquisite gloves. Exquisite gloves. <laughs> Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. A sound comes from the foyer. Ah, ah, they're coming! Ah. She starts walking towards the door, but then stops herself. Christine enters from the foyer, having taken off her coat there. Oh, Christine, it's you. <laughs> there's a, there's no one else out there, is there? It's so good you. I heard you stopped by my place and asked for me. Yeah, I was just passing by and thought I'd drop in, but you weren't there. But actually, there is something I really do need your help with. Uh, let's sit here on the sofa. So, <laughs> tomorrow night, there's going to be a masquerade party at Consul Stenborg's, who lives upstairs, and Torvald wants me to dress up as a Neapolitan village girl and dance the Tarantella, <laughs> which I learned in Capri. Uh, oh, I see. So you're going to put on a whole show? A solo? Yes, yeah, so Torvald wants me to. But, uh, here's the costume. <laughs> Torvald had it made for me in Italy, but now it's not exactly in the best shape, and I don't have a clue how to fix it. I, oh, oh, that can be fixed in no time. It, it, it's <laughs> like a few things have come a little loose here and there. <laughs> got a needle and some thread. That's all we really need. Oh, this is so nice of you. <laughs> Nora hands Christine some needle and thread, which she then uses to fix the costume. So you're going to be in costume tomorrow, Nora? <laughs> Tell you what, why don't I drop by for a bit then and see you all dolled up? 
by the way. I completely forgot to thank you for the cozy evening yesterday. Nora gets uh, up and walks across the room. I don't think it was as cozy here yesterday as I would have liked. You should have visited a little sooner, Christine. It's horrible. It really knows how to make this home feel beautifully exquisite. <laughs> well, so do you, if you ask me. You are your father's daughter, after all. <laughs> and incidentally, uh, is Dr. Rank always as gloomy as he was yesterday? <laughs> no, it was pretty noticeable yesterday. Then again, he suffers from a very dangerous disease. He has consumption of the spinal cord, poor thing. His father was a disgusting man who had affairs left and right. Well, that's, why the re that's the reason Dr. Rank's been sick since childhood. Christine drops her sewing. But Nora... Uh, how can you even know about that? Oh, well, when you have three kids, you get a visit every so often from, you know, from women who know a thing or two about medicine, and they tell you about this and that. Christine goes back to sewing. There's a short moment of silence. Does um, Dr. Rank come here every day? <laughs> every single day. He's Torvald's closest friend, and a great friend of mine, too. He's basically a member of the family. Then let me ask you, is he totally sincere? I mean, or is he just a people pleaser? <laughs> Not at all. What makes you think that? Well, when you introduced us yesterday, you said you'd heard my name mentioned fairly often in this house. But then I noticed that your husband didn't even have a clue who I was. So how could Dr. <laughs> Both things can... can still be true, Christine. Uh, Torvald is so indescribably in love with me that he wants to keep me all to himself, as he likes to say. Uh, at first, he would get so jealous if I simply mentioned any of my friends back home. And so then I avoided doing that. But with Dr. Rankin, I just kept talking to him about these things, and he enjoyed listening to me. Listen, Nora, oh, you're still so much like a kid when it comes to a lot of things. I'm a bit older than you, and I've got a tad more experience, so let me tell you this. You have to break off this thing with Dr. Rank. Uh, break off what thing? This big thing that you... <sighs> Look, yesterday, you mentioned something to me about a rich admirer who was going to die and <laughs> give you money. Yeah, an admirer who doesn't exist, unfortunately, and... Does Dr. Rank have a lot of money? Yes, he does. And no one to take care of? No, no one. <laughs> what? And he comes here every single day? Yeah, that's what I said. So why would this fine, rich gentleman, be so persistent? What? I'm not following what you're saying. Oh, don't pretend, Nora. Did you think that I couldn't figure out who lent you the 4,800? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? How would you even come up with something like that? A close friend of ours who comes here every day? How awkward of a situation would that have been? <laughs> then it really wasn't him. No, definitely not. I would never have even crossed my mind. And besides, he had no money to lend back then. He only inherited it afterwards. Well, I think that was very lucky for you, my good friend. No, it... Never would have occurred to me to ask Dr. Rank, although I'm pretty sure that if I had asked him... Oh, but of course you wouldn't have. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I can't imagine that would have even been necessary. But still, I'm pretty sure that if I spoke to Dr. Rank... Behind your husband's back? I have to get out of the other thing, and that's also behind his back. I have to get out of the whole thing. Yes, that's what you told. I told you yesterday. But Look, a man can fix an issue like this a lot better than a woman. And a woman's own husband. Yeah. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. When you pay off a debt, you get your bond back, don't you? Yeah, of course. And then you can tear it into a hundred thousand pieces and burn it up. That disgusting, filthy paper. Christine looks hard at Nora, puts down her sewing, and stands up slowly. Nora. You're hiding something from me. <laughs> Do I look like I'm hiding something? Hmm? Something's happened to you since yesterday morning. Nora, what happened? Nora moves closer to Christine. Christine? Torvald just got home. Why don't you go hang out with the kids for a bit? Hmm? Uh, Torvald can't even stand the sight of sewing, and Anne-Marie can help you. Christine starts gathering some of the sewing things. Sure, sounds good, but I'm not going home until I get an answer. 
She goes into the nursery as Torvald comes in from the foyer. Nora walks up to Torvald. I've been waiting for you, sweetheart. <laughs> Is that the seamstress? No, that was Christine. <laughs> She's helping me fix my costume, but you'll see. I'm going to look exquisite. <laughs> Didn't I tell you I'd come up with a very good idea? That wasn't that nice of me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, but don't you think it was also nice of me to follow your advice right down to the letter? Uh, nice. <laughs> to obey your husband? <laughs> now, now, you little rascal. I'm sure you didn't mean it that way. Uh, but carry on, I'm not going to bother you. I assume you'll be trying on your costume soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have some work to do, right? Uh, yes. He shows look, her a bundle of papers. Look at this. I just got back from the bank. Torvald turns to go into his office. Uh, Torvald? <laughs> yes? If a little kitten asked you for something very, very nicely. <laughs> yes? Would you do it? I think I'd want to hear what it was first. Mm, your kitten would run around and do all her tricks for you if you were so kind as to do her bidding. <laughs> Why are you talking like that? Your goldfinch would sing in every room with her melody rising and falling. <laughs> well, my goldfinch does that now anyway. Uh, I'd, I'd dress up as an elf girl and dance for you in the moonlight, Thorvald. <laughs> Nora, you wouldn't be talking about what we already discussed this morning, would you? She moves closer to him. Yes, dearest, and I'm begging and pleading. Please. You really have the nerve to bring that up again. <sighs> Honey, you have to. You just have to let Nils keep his job at the bank. Sweetheart, his job is the one that I promised to Christine. Yes, and you've been very thoughtful about that, but can't you just you know, fire someone else instead? Why are you being so incredibly difficult? Just because you gave him your word that you vouched for him, I I'm expected to- and, and that's not the reason! Torvald, it's for your own good! This guy writes in the worst papers! You said so yourself! He can harm you in unimaginable ways! I'm scared to death of him! Oh, just... okay, okay, okay. Now I understand. You're haunted by some old memories. Oh, what do you mean? Of course you'd be thinking about your father. Yes! Okay, just remember how malicious those people were, and they wrote about him in the papers, and how horribly they smeared his name! I think they would have gotten him fired if the department hadn't sent you over to look into it, and if you hadn't been so generous and, and helpful to him. My little Nora, there, there's a big difference between your father and me. Your father was not an unassailable public official. I am, and I hope to stay one for as long as I'm in this job. Uh, who knows what problems evil people can invent? We finally have a chance to live a nice, calm, happy life here in our peaceful, carefree home. You and me and the kids, Torvald, that's why I am begging you. And please. just by intervening on his behalf, you make it impossible for me to keep him. It's already known at the bank that I'm planning to fire him. If it gets out that the new bank director has been vetoed by his own wife. So what? Uh, yeah. So what? If only this stubborn little girl can get her way. Why don't I just go and make myself look ridiculous in front of my whole staff while I'm at it? Let people know how easily I'm swayed by all kinds of external influence. And feel the heat pretty quickly. I can tell you that much. But, but also... There's one thing that makes it pretty much impossible for me to keep Nils at the bank so long as I'm the director. And what's that? Sure. If it comes down to it, I could overlook his moral deficits. Sure you can, can't you? And I hear he's pretty good at his job, too. But I've known Nils since we were practically kids. It was one of those foolish friendships that you're embarrassed about later in life. At one point... I hate to say it, but we had even been somewhat close. And this guy, who has no tact or sense of discipline, loves to play it up, especially when others are around. Oh, yes. He thinks it entitles him to be completely informal around me. At every minute, it's, oh, my buddy Torvald this and my pal Torvald that. It's so embarrassing. He would make my job at the bank completely unbearable. Torvald, you can't be serious. Oh, why not? I, because it's such a petty thing to be upset about. What are you saying? 
Petty? You think I'm petty? <laughs> no, honey, just the opposite, and it's exactly why. Uh, that's what it petty. sounded like. You said my concerns are petty, so I guess that makes me petty, too. Petty. Okay. This has to end now. He marches to the foyer and calls out, Helena! Oh, what are you doing? Torvald looks through his papers as Helena enters. Settling this thing. Here, take this letter and go downstairs immediately. Grab a courier and tell him to deliver it quickly. The address is on it. Here's some money. Sure thing, Mr. Helmer. She exits with the letter and money, her footsteps quickly fading away. Torvald picks up the rest of his papers and turns to his wife triumphantly. Well, that's that, little Miss Obstinate. Torvald? What was in that letter? Niels's termination. Call her back, Torvald. There's still time. Torvald, call her back. Do it for me, for yourself, for your kids. Are you even listening to me, Torvald? Call her back. You don't know what that letter can bring down on all of us. Too late. Yeah. Too late. Sweetheart, I can excuse the anxiety you're going through, even though it's basically an insult to me. Yes, it is. Don't you think it's an insult to assume that I would be scared of a worthless lawyer's revenge? But I forgive you anyway. Because if you really think about it, it's actually a beautiful testament to your love for me. He hugs her. And that's just how it should be, my own darling Nora. Come what may. If it really comes down to it, you can be sure that I have both strength and courage. You'll see that I'm mad enough to bear any and all burdens. What do you mean by that? I mean any and all. No. No, you'll never, ever have to do that. All right. Then we'll share the burden, or as husband and wife. It's how it should be anyway. He caresses her face. Feel better now? Oh, hey now. Hey, come, come on. Eyes like a terrified dove. There's no need for that. This is just pure fantasy. Now, you should go run through the Tarantella and rehearse with your tambourine. I'm going to go into my inner office and shut both doors. That way, I won't hear a thing. You can make as much noise as you like. And when Rank gets here, tell him where he can find me. Torvald nods to her, takes his papers, goes into his office, and shuts the door. Nora, bewildered with anxiety, stands as if nailed to the floor and whispers to herself. That's, that's what I need to do it. He's going to do it. He will do it, despite everything. No. No, not that. Never. Never. Anything's better than that. A rescue, a way out. The doorbell rings. Dr. Wright. Anything's better than that. Anything. Whatever it takes. She puts her hands over her face, pulls herself together, goes to the door, and opens it. Rank is standing in the foyer, hanging up his coat. The sun is setting, and as they speak, the room begins to get dark. <sighs> Hello, Dr. Wright. Did Helena let you in? I knew it was you as soon as the doorbell rang. But uh, Torvald can't see you just yet. I think he's busy with something. And you? Nora brings him in and shuts the door after him. Oh, you know me well enough to know I always have time for you. Thank you. I'll take as much of it for as long as I can. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean by that? For as long as you can. Does it worry you? It's just such an odd expression. Is something going to happen? Oh, nothing more than what I've already been prepared for. Definitely didn't expect it to happen so soon. <laughs> she grips his arm tightly. What have you heard? Dr. Rank, you have to tell me. He goes over by the fireplace and sits down. She follows him. It's all downhill for me, I'm afraid. And there's nothing I can do about it. <sighs> this is a... This is about you. Who else? <laughs> no point in lying to myself. I'm the most miserable of all my patients, Nora. These past few days, I've taken a complete account of my health. 
bankrupt. <laughs> oh, by the end of the month, I'll probably be six feet under, rotting in some oh. cemetery. Dr. Rank, that's such an ugly thing to say. Yeah, well, the whole damn thing is ugly. And worst of all, there's a whole lot more ugliness left to come. There's only one medical test I still need to complete, and when I've done that, I'll know how rapidly my condition will deteriorate and when my final hours will roughly come. Nora, there's something I need to tell you. That Torvald, in all of his genteel sensibilities, has such an intense aversion to anything he considers ugly. I don't want him by my side when I- oh, Dr. Rank! I don't want him there, Nora. Under any circumstances, my door will be closed to him. Okay. When I'm sure that the uh, worst has finally come, I'll send you my business card with a black cross on it. Then you'll know that uh, my abomination of desolation has begun. You're being so ridiculous today. And here I was hoping you'd be in a really good mood. With death knocking at my door? <laughs> oh, and have to pay this price for another man's sin. Is there any justice in that? <laughs> oh, it seems in every family, one way or another, there's this divine retribution taking place. <laughs> Stop it! Happy thoughts! Happy thoughts! Now, now... You can't help but laugh at the whole thing, really. <laughs> my poor, innocent spines forced to suffer for all the good times my father had as a lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he did have a weakness for poire gras, didn't he? <laughs> yes, and truffles. <laughs> truffles, yes, and uh, oysters, too, I think. Oh, well, yes, oysters, of course, goes without saying. <laughs> and then all that port and champagne. It's so sad that these delicacies would impact the spine like that. Yeah, sadder even to impact the unfortunate spine of someone who hasn't had the pleasure of enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the saddest part of it all. <sighs> hmm. Why did you smile? No, you laughed. <laughs> no, no, Dr. Rank, it was you who smiled. Oh, you're more of a troublemaker than I thought. Well, I have been thinking about getting into a little trouble today. <laughs> Seems like it. She puts both of her hands on his shoulders. Dr. Rank, you can't just go and die on us like that. Ah, uh, you'll get over it quickly. Out of sight, out of mind. Do you really believe that? People make new connections and then they forget. <laughs> Who's making new connections? You and Torvald after I'm gone. Oh, I think you may already have a head start on that. Who's this Christine Linda that was here last night, huh? <laughs> Come on now. You're not actually jealous of her. Yes, I am. <laughs> She'll be my replacement. When I'm gone, this woman will just Shh, it. Don't talk so loud. She's in the next room. Today, too. See what I mean? <laughs> she only stopped by to fix my costume. Oh my god, you're being so ridiculous. Be nice now, Dr. Rank. Tomorrow, you'll get to see how well I can dance. And you can even pretend that I'm doing it just for you. And for Torval, too. She takes various things out of the costume box. Hmm. Dr. Rank, come here and sit down. I want to show you something. What is it? Would you look at these? Silk <laughs> stockings? <gasps> New silk stockings. <laughs> Aren't they just exquisite? Well, it's dark in here right now, so you can't tell, but tomorrow... No, no, I guess you wouldn't be able to tell then either. You'd only be allowed to see up to, like, here. <laughs> Okay, fine. I might let you take a little sneak peek a little higher. <laughs> Why the judgmental look? What, you don't think they'll fit me? Oh, I have no way of forming an accurate opinion about that. She looks at him for a brief moment. <laughs> Shame on you! Nora hits him lightly on the ear with her stockings. Take that. <laughs> she folds them up and throws them in the box. What other wonders can I expect to see tomorrow night? Not a single thing more since you've been so naughty. She looks through the other things in the box while humming to herself. You know, when I'm sitting here talking to you as intimately as we have been, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine what my life would have been like had I never stepped foot in this house. Yes, 
I think you felt right at home here with us. And then having to leave it all without... Uh, oh, gosh, you're not going anywhere. Leave it all without being able to leave behind a small token of my gratitude. Not even a brief sense of loss. Not even, nothing except an empty space that's easily filled by the first person to come along. What if I asked you for... <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> no, for what? For a big testament to your friendship. Yes. I mean, it would be a very big favor. But would you please just make me happy this one time? <laughs> but you don't even know what the favor is yet. Well, all right then, tell me. I really can't, Dr. Rank. It's totally unreasonable. We're talking advice and help and a huge favor. I can't imagine what you mean, but you can still tell me. Do you trust me? More than anyone else, I think. I know that you're my closest and best friend. That's why I want to tell you. Well, Dr. Rank, it's something you have to help me prevent. You know how deeply, how enormously Torvald loves me. He would risk his own life for me. Do you think he's the only one? The only one? Who would risk his life for you. Oh, I see. I swore to myself I'd let you know before I died. It wasn't going to be a better time than the present. <sighs> so, now you know, Nora, and now you also know that you can trust me more than you can trust anybody else. Nora stands deliberately and quietly. I, I have to go. Rank makes room for her to pass him, but remains seated. Nora? She goes towards the foyer and calls out. Uh, Helena, can you please bring in the lamp? She turns and goes over to the fireplace. Dr. Rank, that was really horrible of you. To have loved you as much as anybody else, was that so horrible? No, but to tell me about it, that wasn't necessary at all. What do you mean? Did you know? Helena enters with a lamp. She pretends not to notice the palpably awkward atmosphere, inadvertently making it more awkward for everyone. She tries to find a place to put the lamp and decides on a table. She sits it there and backs out of the room. After a moment. Nora, did you know? How would I know if I knew or didn't know? I really can't say. <sighs> so I think you could be so awkward, Dr. Rank. Everything was going so great. Well, at least now you know that I'm at your disposal, body and soul. So won't you tell me what you need? <laughs> After that? I'm begging you. Just tell me what you need. I can't tell you anything now. Oh, please. You shouldn't punish me like this. Let me help you in any way possible. You can't do anything for me now. Besides, I don't really need help anyway. You'll see, it's all just been in my head. It really, really has. She sits down in the rocking chair and looks at him with a smile. You really are a handsome gentleman, Dr. Rank. Uh, don't you feel ashamed of yourself now that there's some light in the room? No, not really. But, well, maybe I should go away forever. Stop it. You're not, you're going to keep coming here just as much as before. <laughs> you know, well as I do, that Torvald can't go on without you. Yes, and you? Yeah, I always think it's much more entertaining when you're around. That's exactly what lured me down this path. You are such an enigma to me, Nora. And I often felt as if you'd almost like to be with me as much as you would with Torvald. Well... You see, there are those you love the most, and others you'd almost like to be with. Yes, there's some truth to that. When I still lived back home, of course I'd love Dad the most, but <laughs> I always thought it was a lot more fun to sneak down to the maid's room, because they never lectured me or preached at me at all, and they always talked about the most fun things. I see, so I'm the maid's replacement. <laughs> Dr. Rank, you know that's not what I meant at all. But 
I'm sure you can appreciate how living with Torvald is, in a way, like living with my father. <laughs> Helena enters from the foyer, looking a bit uncomfortable. Mrs. Helmer? She whispers to Nora and hands her a card. Nora glances at it and quickly puts it in her pocket. Is there something wrong? Uh, no, no, not at all. It's just, um, my, it's my new costume. <laughs> what? You said your costume was in there. Oh, yes, that one. But this is a different one. I ordered it. Torvald can't know that I... Uh, so it. that was the big secret. Yes, sure. Just why don't you go see him? Hmm? He locked himself up in his inner office. Please keep him busy as yeah, long calm as... Calm down. Don't worry. I won't let him escape. He goes into Torvald's office. So, he's waiting in the kitchen. Yes, he came up the back stairs. And you told him someone was already here? Yes, but it made no difference. He just won't go away. No, he says he's not leaving until he's had a nice, long chat with you. His words. Fine. Tell him to come in, but quietly. Helena, you cannot say anything about this to anyone. It's a surprise for my husband. A surprise. Sure. Yes. I understand. She goes out through the foyer and into the kitchen. Nora paces back and forth. This is happening. This is really happening. No, 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 it can't happen. It won't happen. She locks the door to Torvald's office. Helena ushers Nils in and shuts the door after him. Nora marches towards him. Be quiet. My husband is home. It doesn't matter. What do you want from me? Well, an explanation to start. Well, hurry up. What is it? You probably know that I received my dismissal notice. I couldn't stop it, Nils. I fought for you as hard as I could, but in the end it made no difference. <laughs> Does your husband have so little love for you then? I mean, <laughs> he is aware of what I can do to you, but he still... <laughs> Why would you assume he knows about any of that? I didn't assume anything. It just wouldn't be like my, bu my good buddy Torvald to actually behave like a real man. Nils, I demand you show a little respect for my husband. Well, yes, that's the only respect he deserves. But since you've obviously been so anxious about keeping this whole thing a secret, would it be so bold of me to assume that since our last chat, you've gained a bit of insight into the legal consequences of your actions? More than you could ever teach me. <laughs> yeah, such a bad lawyer, as you said. What is it you want from me? Only to see how you were, and how you're doing. I've actually been thinking about you all day. You may not know this, Nora, but a debt collector, um, a lawyer, a, uh, you know, someone like me. Even I have a little thing that people call a heart. <laughs> Prove it then! Think about my little kids! Have you and your husband ever thought about mine? But never mind. I just wanted to tell you that you don't need to make this problem, you don't need to take it so seriously. First of all, I, I won't be pressing any charges. No, of course not. I was sure you wouldn't. This whole thing can be resolved peacefully. There's no reason why anyone would have to know anything about it. We'll just keep it between the three of us. Mm, my husband can't ever know anything about it. And just how are you going to prevent that? Can you pay the balance that you still owe? No, not at the moment. Or maybe you found a quick and easy way to make money? Not one that I'm willing to use. Well, it wouldn't matter or make a difference anyway. You can stand here right now with a pile of cash in your hand and I still wouldn't give you the bond back. Then explain to me why you want it so much. Just to have it. Keep it safe. No one who's not involved will ever even see it. So if you're going around trying to come up with some sort of desperate solution, maybe debating running away from home, or possibly considering 
something even worse. How would you know? Then cut it out. But how, how would you know that I'd thought about it? Most of us think about it at first. I thought about it too. But I didn't have the guts, so. I, I don't either. No. You don't, do you? We don't have the guts for it. What a stupid mistake that would have been anyway. And we could have just waited for the domestic storm to pass. <sighs> I, I have a letter for your husband in my pocket. Telling him everything? As delicately as I possibly could. No, no, just, he can't get that letter. Rip it up, just rip it up. I'll find a way to get you the money. Sorry, Nora, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I've already said no, that. I'm not talking about what I owe you. Tell me how much money you plan on getting from my husband, and I'll get it for you instead. I'm not asking your husband for money. What do you want, then? I want to get back on my feet. Nora, God, to, to move up in this life. And that's something that he can help me with. For the past year and a half, I, I stayed completely out of trouble, even, even when I had... <sighs> to make it through some miserable situations. I, I was actually happy to climb my way up step by step. Now I'm being pushed down again. But this time, I, I'm not going to simply settle for the same old thing. This time, I want to move up in life. You hear me? I want to work at the bank again, but in a higher position. Your husband needs to create that position for me. He'll never do that. He will. I know him. You won't even grumble about it. And just and as soon as I'm back there again, you'll see. It won't even be a year before I'm his right hand man. And then it'll be Nils Krogstad and not Torvald Helmer who'll be running the commercial bank. I'd die before I let that happen. Oh. So you're saying you'd and actually I have the guts for it now. Oh, please. Look at you. A delicate, pampered, flowered like you could never even imagine. Well, you'll see. You'll see. Wow. Under the ice, maybe? Drown in the cold, black water? And then float up in the spring, all ugly and unrecognizable, with your torn clothes and disheveled <laughs> Don't scare me. Hair. But neither do you. People don't do things like that, Nora. Besides, what difference would it make? I'd have him in my pocket either way. After I'm dead? You still think you could- Yeah, you're dead? forgetting that at that point, I would have complete control of your reputation. You wouldn't even be here to defend yourself. Nora stands, speechless, looking at him for a moment. Well. Now that I've warned you, don't go do it doing anything stupid. I'll I'll be expecting to hear from Torvald as soon as he reads my letter. Just remember, it was your husband who forced me to do this. I'll never forgive him for that. Goodbye, Nora. He exits through the foyer and closes the door after himself. Nora goes to the door, cracks it open, and listens. He's leaving it. Doesn't sound like he's putting the letter in the box. God, no, that wouldn't make any sense. She slowly opens the door wider, trying to catch sight of him. But he's just, he's just standing in front of the mailbox. He's not even going downstairs. Did he change his mind? Could he have? We hear the sound of a letter dropping into the mailbox. His footsteps fade away as he goes downstairs. With a stifled cry, Nora runs across the room. A short pause. In the mailbox. She treads nervously back to the open door. There it is. Torvald. 
tore all the snow way out of the snow. Christine comes in from the nursery, carrying Nora's costume. Well, it looks like it's all fixed up now. You want to try it on? Christine, come here. Christine throws the costume down on the sofa. What's wrong? You look a little nauseous. Come here. Do you see that letter right there through the glass in the mailbox? Yeah, I see it. That letter is from Nils Krogstad. Nora? So it was Nils who lent you the money? Yes, and now Torvald's going to find out about it. But, but believe me, Nora, that's the best thing for both of you. No, there's more to it than that. I, I forged a signature. You what? I, I'm only telling you this, Christine. I need you to be my witness. Your witness? What would that involve, exactly? If I go crazy, and at this point it could really happen. No. Or if something else happens to me, something that keeps me from being here. Oh, honey, you're clearly out of your mind. There's a possibility that someone else might try to take the blame, if you know what I mean? Yes. Yes, but why would you think that... If that happens, Christine, I need you to be my witness that it's not true. Okay, and I'm not out of my mind. I'm of perfectly sound mind and body. And I am telling you that no one else knew anything about what I did. I did it totally on my own. Remember that. I will, but I don't understand why. Don't you get it? The divine is finally going to happen. The divine? Yes, the divine, but it's also awful, Christine, and it can't happen no matter what. I'll, I'll go right now and have a talk with Nils. No, don't go there. He'll only hurt you. There was a time when he would have done anything for me. Nils? Where does he live? How should I know? Oh, yes. Um, ha, yeah, there is his card. But the letter, Christine, the letter. Torvald knocks on the locked door of his office. Uh, Nora? N Nora? Uh, don't worry, sweetheart. We're not barging in. <laughs> you locked the door. Uh, are you trying on your costume? Yes, yes, I am. I'm going to look so beautiful, Torvald. <laughs> it looks like he lives right around the corner. Yes, but it won't make any difference. It's hopeless. His letter sitting right there in the mailbox. And, and only your husband has the key? Yes, always. Well, Nils can ask for his letter back on red. He just needs an excuse. But this is the time Torvald usually checks the mail. So, I just, I just... I'll come back as soon as I can. She rushes out through the foyer. Nora goes to Torvald's door, unlocks it, and peeks in. Torvald! <laughs> well, am I finally allowed to go into my own living room? <laughs> come on, right. Now we finally get to see. He stops in the doorway with Rank right behind him. What's this? Uh, what's what, honey? Uh, Rank had me thinking I'd get to witness a remarkable transformation. Well, that's what I thought, but I guess I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no one's witnessing any remarkable transformations until tomorrow. <laughs> hey, you look so exhausted. Have you been rehearsing a little too hard? No, actually, I haven't gotten a chance to rehearse at all. Well, you're going to have to... Yes, yes, I will, Torvald, but... You know me, I can't do anything without your help. I totally forgot the whole dance. Oh, well, I guess I can refresh your memory. Oh, yes, please help me, Torvald. Promise me you will? I'm just so nervous about it. All those people, you're going to have to give up your entire evening. Not a single second of work. Promise, honey? Okay, I promise. This evening, I'm totally at your disposal, you helpless little thing. <laughs> By the way, I... I just need to check them. He walks towards the foyer. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, just checking the mail. Uh, no, no, don't do that, Torvald. Why not? <sighs> Torvald, don't bother. There's nothing there. I'll just take a quick look. He turns to go to the mailbox. Nora runs to the piano and starts playing the first few notes of the Tarantella. Torvald stops at the door and turns towards her. I can't dance tomorrow if I don't rehearse with you. Are you really that anxious about it, sweetheart? Yes, so anxious. Let's rehearse right now, okay? Uh, we have some time before dinner, so sit down and play for me, honey. Guide me and correct me like you always do. I'd be more than happy to if that's really what you want. Mm -hmm. He sits down at the piano. Nora takes a tambourine and a colorful French shawl out of the costume box. She hastily drapes it around her shoulders and springs <laughs> to the middle of the room. 
Now, play for me. I want to dance. <laughs> Torvald plays, and Nora dances, as Rank stands by the piano and watches. She dances around, wildly, frantically, desperately. Torvald hesitates in his playing, but continues. Slow down. Uh, not so fast. <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. Uh, not so frantically, Nora. Uh, but that's how it needs to be. Torvald stops playing. Uh, no, uh, no, that's all wrong. Nora <laughs>, laughs and swings the tambourine around. <laughs> I told you so. <clears throat> uh, let me play for her. Uh, yes, please. I can correct her mistakes better that way. Torvald stands up, and Rank takes his place at the piano and plays. Nora's dance grows more and more frantic. Torvald stands by the fireplace, and as Nora dances, he gives her frequent instructions, but she doesn't seem to hear him. The adornments in her hair fly off, but she pays no attention to them. She just goes on dancing. Christine enters and stands at the door, shocked at what she's witnessing. Nora sees her, but keeps on dancing. Nora, sweetheart, it looks like you're dancing as if your life depends on it. Uh, stop, Rank. This is insane. Uh, stop, please. Rank stops playing, and Nora abruptly stands still. Torvald marches up to her. I don't believe this. You forgot everything I taught you. She tosses the tambourine away. I told you so. You need a lot of coaching. Yes. Yes, I do. Don't I? You're going to have to work with me right up to the last minute. Promise me, Torvald. You can count on me. You're not allowed to think of anything except me, today and tomorrow. You can't read a single letter. In fact, you don't even need to open up the mailbox at all. <laughs> ah, I see. You're still afraid of that guy. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Nora, I can see it in your eyes. There's a letter in there from him, isn't there? I don't know, maybe. But you shouldn't read anything from him anyway. I don't want anything ugly to come between us, at least until after the party's over. <clears throat> it, it really would be easier if you just went along with it. Torvald takes Nora in his arms. Fine. The child can have her way. But tomorrow night, after the party... Then you'll be free. Helena appears in the foyer doorway. She states that dinner is served. Helena, we'll have champagne. <laughs> she replies, of course, Mrs. Helmer. Uh, hey, now. Are we turning this dinner into a party? <laughs> yes, a champagne party until dawn. And a couple of macaroons, Helena, just for tonight. Uh, let's not get too crazy now. <laughs> Can I just get my own little goldfinch back? <sighs> Don't worry, you will. But you go on ahead, and you too, Dr. Rank. Christine, could you help me fix my hair first? <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think she's, um, I mean, is she expecting something? No, no, not at all. It's just this childish anxiety I told you about. <laughs> they all go out into the dining room. <sighs> so? Oh, you figured a saw it in your eyes. Tomorrow evening, though, I left him a note. <sighs> Shouldn't have. No point in trying to prevent anything. Actually, it's... A pleasure to just sit here and wait for the divine to happen. What exactly is this divine you're waiting for? I, you wouldn't get it. Please, go and join them. I'll be right there. Christine goes into the dining room. Nora stands still for a moment, regaining her composure, and then checks her watch. Five o'clock, seven hours until midnight, and then another 24 after that, and the dance will be over. 24 plus 7, it's 31 hours left to live. Where's my little goldfinch? As though nothing had happened, she runs to him with open arms. Here she is! <laughs>
3. The same room, the next night. The table has been moved to the middle of the room, with chairs all around it. The door to the foyer is open. Faint sounds of dance music are heard from upstairs. Christine is sitting at the table, absent-mindedly flipping through the pages of a book. She tries to read, but can't focus. She puts down the book, picks up her knitting, and then sets it down after a stitch or two. Every now and then, she listens closely for a sound to come from the front door. After a moment, she checks her watch. Still not here. Time is running out. She goes into the foyer, cautiously opens the front door, and hears the sound of light footsteps coming up the stairs. She come whispers, There's no one here. I found a note from you at home. What's this about? We need to have a talk. Really? And do we need to have it here? We can't have it where I'm staying. My room doesn't have a private entrance. You could come in. We're all alone. The maid's sleeping and the Helmers are upstairs at a party. So they're really partying tonight? Seriously? Yeah, why not? You're right. Why not? So then, let's talk. <sighs> What's there even left for us to talk about? There's a lot left for us to talk about. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, no, that's because you never understood me properly. Oh, okay. Was there anything else to understand besides the same old story? A cruel woman just ditches a man when a more lucrative prospect shows up? You really think I'm cruel? Like, it was easy for me to break up with you. Wasn't it? Nils, did you, do you honestly believe that? Well, if that's not the case, then why did you write all those awful things to me back then? I didn't have a choice. When I had to break things off with you, I also had to make sure that you had no feelings left for me. None. Wow. Okay, so that whole thing, it's only ever been about the money? I had to provide for a helpless mother and two little boys. Don't you forget that. We couldn't wait for you, Nils. Your future wasn't exactly looking very bright at the time. Well, maybe it wasn't. But you still had no right to just throw me away like that. For anybody's sake. Yeah, no. Maybe. There were a lot of times when I asked myself if I really did have that right. When I lost you, it felt like the earth had gone out from under me. Now look at me. I'm just a castaway hanging onto the wreck. Maybe there's a lifeboat on the way. There was, but then you stopped it. I, I didn't know, Nils. It's not like I did this on purpose. I only found out today that it was your job. I'm kidding. Okay, I'll take your word for it, but now that you do know, would you quit? No, <laughs> it wouldn't do any good anyway. Any good anyway. <laughs> I would have done it for you. Well, I learned to be a little more practical, Nils. Life and a harsh, bitter reality taught me that. Yeah, and life has taught me not to trust some empty words. Well, then life's taught you something pretty practical. They stand tensely in their discomfort for a few seconds. What about actions? What do you mean? You said you were just a castaway hanging on to the wreck. And I have my reasons. Well, I'm a castaway hanging on through the wreck, too. I have nobody. No one to take care of. No one to mourn. That was your own choice. I had no other choice! Okay, fine. You had no choice. A few seconds of awkward silence. What now? Nils, what if... There's a way for the two castaways to reach out to each other. What are you saying? That they'd have a better chance of surviving together than on their own. 
Christine. Why do you think I came to this town? What, are you saying that I factored into that decision? I have to work, Nils. I don't even think I could stand this life if I didn't. I've always worked my whole life, as far back as I can remember, and it has been my greatest and only joy. But like I said, I'm all alone in this world, and, and I'm left feeling empty and abandoned. I don't get any satisfaction out of working for myself, Nils. Give me something. Someone to work for. I don't buy that. Only a woman's overbearing sense of altruism would drive her to sacrifice herself like that. When have I ever been overbearing? Is this what you really want? Let, let me ask you a question. Are you even aware of my past? Yes. And you know what they think of me around here. The way you were talking earlier, it sounded like you think you would have turned out differently if we had stayed together. Yes, absolutely. I know that. That can still happen, though, can't it? Christine, are you actually being serious? He looks at her. She looks back at him. He sighs. Yeah. I can tell from your eyes. But with everything that I've been going through, I, I don't know if you want to risk your reputation. Or... I want to be a mother. And, and you kids need one. We both need each other, Nils. I have faith in you. Maybe together we can handle anything. He holds her hands. Thank you, Christine. Really, thank you. Maybe now I can finally have a chance to get things back on, on, on track, but what about... The music heard from upstairs has changed to the Tarantella. Oh, shush. Sure, sure. Oh, the Tarantella's started. You have to go. Why? What's happening? You, you hear that? When that's over, it'll only be a matter of minutes before they're back. Okay, okay, I, I'll go. Not that it makes any difference. You don't even know what I've already done to them, do you? I, I, I know all about that. And you're sure you still want to go through with this? I, I <laughs> understand very well how far a man like you is willing to go when he's desperate. I wish I couldn't do what I did. I mean, you can. Your letter's still in the mailbox. Are you sure? Yes, but I, th I think... What? Well, wait. <laughs> Is this what this has been about? It, you're just trying to save your friend no matter what. Because, I, if, Christine, if it is, just... Just tell me. Is that it? Nils, those who sold themselves off once for the benefit of someone else would never do it twice. Well, then I'll just ask for my letter back. No, no. Well, why not? I, I can wait here until Torvald comes down. I'll, I'll tell him he has to give it back to me, that it, it was just a gut reaction to him firing me, and, and now I'm, into, I'm too embarrassed for him no, to read Nils, it. No, Nils, you shouldn't ask for your letter back. Well, isn't that exactly why you wanted me to meet you here? In a moment of panic, yes, but it's been a whole day since, and, and honestly, you wouldn't even believe all the things I've witnessed here in that time. Torvald needs to know all of it. This unfortunate secret has to be brought to life, and, and, and there must be a complete and understanding between them. It's impossible to keep up with all these secrets and, and lies and excuses. I, as long as you're willing to take that risk, but... But there's at least one thing that I can do. I just have to do it now. Christine notices that the Tarantella music coming from upstairs has stopped. Oh, hurry up and go. Uh, the dance just ended. It's not safe here anymore. I'll wait for you downstairs. Yes. You'll have to walk me home, you know. Christine, this is the happiest I've ever been in all my life. He goes through the foyer and out the front door leaving the door to the foyer open behind him. Christine tidies up around the room and grabs her coat. Oh, what a difference. God, what a 
difference. Oh, someone to care for, to live for. A home to fill with light and in warmth and comfort. Oh, oh, there's just one more thing left to do. Oh, I wish they'd hurry up. Oh, and here they are. She throws on her coat while Torvald and Nora's voices are heard from outside the door. A key is turned and Torvald leads Nora inside, almost by force. She's in her Tarantella costume with a large shawl draped over her shoulders. He's in evening dress with a black domino cloak on top, which has come undone. Nora stands back by the door, reluctant to come inside. I don't want to go back upstairs. I don't want to leave so early. But Nora, darling. I'm begging you, Torvald, please, please, just one more hour. Not one more minute, sweetheart. You know that was our deal. Uh, Come now, into the living room. You'll catch a cold standing here. In spite of her resistance, Torvald leads her gently into the room, neither having noticed Christine until... Good evening. Uh, Christine, why are you here so late? Yeah, sorry. I was just really looking forward to seeing Nora in her costume. Uh, Have you been sitting here waiting this whole time? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I didn't get here in time. You were already upstairs, and and I didn't want to leave before getting to see you. Torvald takes off Nora's shawl and spins her around. Uh, Yes, uh, and take a good look at her. (laughs) I think she's worth looking at. (laughs) Isn't she exquisite, Christine? Yeah, she is. Isn't she exceptionally exquisite? (laughs) That was the general consensus at the party, you know. But she's awfully stubborn, this sweet little thing. What are we even supposed to do with her? Would you believe I almost had to drag her out of there? Torvald, you're going to regret not letting me stay, not even for a half hour. You hear how she talks to me, Christine? She dances her tarantella. is a tremendous hit, which was well-deserved, by the way. Although the performance was perhaps a bit too authentic, more so, I mean, than... An artistic representation would usually entail, strictly speaking. Uh, But never mind about that. The important thing is, she was a hit. A tremendous hit. Should I then just hang around after that? Uh, Dilute the impact? No thanks. So, I took my little exquisite Capri girl. My capricious little Capri girl. Get it? On my own, took one quick lap around the room, a curtsy here, a bow there. And then, as they say in the novels... Uh, This beautiful vision vanished into thin air. A finale should always be effective, Christine. But it's impossible for me to get that into her little head. Wow. Is it hot in here? He throws his domino cloak on a chair and opens the door to his office. Huh. It's all dark in there. Uh, Oh, of course. Excuse me. He goes into his office and lights some candles. Well... I've had a chat with him. And? Nora, you need to tell your husband. No. No, you have nothing to worry about as far as Nils is concerned, but you have to tell him. I'm not going to tell him. Then the letter will. They stare at each other for a second. Thank you, Christine. Now I know exactly what I have to do. Torvald saunters back into the living room. Well, Christine... Have you admired her sufficiently? <laughs> yes. And now I'll say goodnight. Oh, already? By the way, is this your knitting? He points to the knitting material sitting on the table, which Christine picks up. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I almost forgot it. So you knit? I do. You know what? You should embroider instead. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why? Because it's just so much more beautiful. Let me show you. You hold the embroidery like this in your left hand. And you use the needle with the right, like this. With a long, delicate curve. Isn't that lovely? Yes, it is. But with knitting, it can never be anything except ugly. See here. Uh, the cramped arms, the, the knitting needles going up and down and up and down. Almost like playing with chopsticks. That was some really excellent champagne, by the way. Yeah, well, good night, Nora. And stop being so stubborn. You said it, Christine. <laughs> good night, Mr. Director. 
Torvald escorts her to the door. Good night, good night. You'll get home all right, I hope. I, I know it it's late, and, and I would walk you home, but you don't really have that far to go, do you? <laughs> good night, good night. She leaves. He shuts the door behind her and comes back in. Finally, I thought she'd never leave. She's so boring, isn't she? And aren't you exhausted, Torvald? No, not at all. Sleepy? Not one bit. Uh, the opposite, actually. I feel totally awake. You, you look tired and sleepy. Uh, yeah, I'm very tired. I, I want to go to bed soon. There, see? So I was right not to let you stay there long. Yes, everything you do is right, Torvald. He kisses her forehead. Finally, the little goldfinch speaks like a human. <laughs> By the way, did you notice how cheerful Rank was tonight? Uh, was he? I didn't really get a chance to talk to him. I barely got a few words in with him myself. Still, it's been a long time since I've seen him in this good of a mood. He looks at her for a bit. One thing clearly on his mind, then comes closer to her. Hmm. So nice to be back home again. To be all alone with you. <laughs> you adorable little thing. Don't look at me like that, Torvald. What? I'm not allowed to look at my most prized possession? At all this glory that's mine? And mine alone? Nora goes to the other side of the table. <laughs> Shouldn't say things like that to me tonight. He follows her. Looks like you still have the Tarantella in your body. And sweetheart, it makes you even more attractive than you already are. Hear that? Guests are leaving upstairs. Nora. Soon the whole place will be quiet. Yeah, I would sure hope so. You do, don't you? Do you know why I barely talk to you when we're out together at an event like this? Why I try to stay away from you the whole time? Do you know why? It's because I'd like to pretend that you're my secret lover and that no one has a clue there's anything going on between us. Yes, yes, yes. I know you think about me all the time. And when we leave and I get to drape a shawl on your beautiful shoulders over your delicate back, then I like to pretend that you're my young bride, that we just got home from our wedding and I finally get to carry you inside my home, that I'm alone with you for the first time, all alone with you, my sweet little angel, just like we are now. You were on my mind the entire night when I watched you captivate and mesmerize the guests with your Tarantella. Nora, I, I swear, it set my whole body on fire. I couldn't take it anymore. That's why I brought you down here so early. I don't go to sleep, Torvald. I, I just want to be alone. I'm not really in the mood. What's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to be funny, little Nora? Not really in the mood. So I guess I'm not really your husband? Knock on the front door. <laughs> Who is it? It's me. Can I come in for a second? What does he want now? Just a minute. Torvald marches to the front door, unlocks, and opens it. Rank! It's so nice of you not to pass over our door. I heard your voice. Thought I might drop by. With a cursory glance around the room. Ah, oh, yes. These precious, familiar spaces. You made it so nice and cozy in here, you two. It sounds like you were pretty nice and cozy upstairs yourself. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Why shouldn't I be? Why not enjoy everything in this world? Yeah, at least as much as you can for uh, as long as you can. <laughs> the wine was exceptional. Especially the champagne. Do you notice that too? Oh, it's almost incredible how many I managed to knock back. <laughs> Uh, Torvald also had a lot of champagne tonight. Did he now? Yes, and it's always so entertaining afterwards. Well, why not enjoy an entertaining evening after a productive day? <laughs> productive? 
unfortunately, that's not a, a word I can use to describe my day. But I can. <laughs> Dr. Rink, you must have completed a scientific investigation today. Exactly. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Little Nora is talking about scientific investigations now. <laughs> and should I congratulate you on the results? Yes, you should. So it's good news. The best news possible for both doctor and patient. Certainty. Certainty? Absolute certainty. So, shouldn't I enjoy an entertaining evening after that? <laughs> yes, you're right, Dr. Rank. I second that, as long as you don't end up paying for it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't have anything in this world without paying for it. <laughs> Dr. Rank, do you uh, enjoy masquerades? Oh, sure. When there's a lot of bizarre costumes around. <laughs> Tell me, what... Uh, what should the two of us be for the next one? You little scatterbrain. How are you already thinking about the next party? The two of us. Well, let me see. Oh, you should definitely go as Felicity Personified. Yeah. And what exactly do you suggest is an appropriate costume for that? You just let your wife wear and do exactly what she does. Every single day. How very well said. So then, do you know what you would be? Oh, oh, yes, my friend. I have that all figured out. And? At the next masquerade party, I will be invisible. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. I'd have to have a big black hat. <laughs> have you ever heard about the, the hat of invisibility? Once you put it on, no one can see you. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> You're right. Uh, but now, let me get back to what I really came here for. Torvald. Give me a cigar, one of the dark Havanas. Oh, my pleasure. He offers him his cigar case. Frank takes one and cuts off the end. Ah, uh, thanks. Here, let me uh, give you a light. Oh. Nora strikes a match and holds it out for Rank, who lights his cigar. Thanks. And now, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. Sleep well, Dr. Rank. Oh, thank you for that wish. Wish me the same? You. <laughs> okay, if you want to, sleep well. And thanks for the light. He nods to them both and leaves. He drank way more than he should have. Maybe. Torvald takes his keys out of his pocket and goes out into the foyer. Tor Torvald, what are you doing there? Just emptying the mailbox. It's pretty full. There, there won't be any room to put the morning paper there otherwise. Uh, are you going to work tonight? You know that I'm not. What's this? Someone's tampered with the lock. Tampered with? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Why? I, I wouldn't have thought the maids. There's a broken hairpin here. Nora, it looks like one of yours. Oh, it's probably just the kids. <laughs> then you need to break them out of this habit. There, finally got it open. He takes out the contents of the mailbox and calls into the kitchen. Uh, Helena? Helena, turn off the light in the entrance. He goes back into the room closes the door, and holds out his hands full of letters, going through them and turning them over while Nora stands by the window. Would you look at that? See how much there is. What's this? Oh, the letter. No, 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 it's horrible. Two cards. From Rank. From Dr. Rank? Dr. Rank, MD. They were on top. He must have put them in before he left. Is... Is there anything written on them? 
There's a black cross over his name. See? How morbid. It's like he's announcing his own death. That's, that's exactly what he's doing. What? Do you know something? What did he tell you? Yeah, he, he said that when the cards arrive, it means he's finally saying his goodbyes to us. He wants to shut himself off and die alone. Poor guy. I, I knew I wasn't going to have him around for a long time, but this is too soon. And, and then to just hide himself like a wounded animal. Well, when it has to happen, it's better that it happen quietly. Don't you think so, Torvald? He was basically part of our family. I, I can't even picture him gone. It, it's almost like he'd become a dark cloud, casting a shadow on our sunlit happiness. Well, then maybe it's for the best, for him, at least. And, and maybe for us too, Nora. Now you and I only have each other to lean on. He puts his arms around her. My precious wife, I don't think I can hold you tight enough. You know, Nora, there were a lot of times when I wished that you'd be threatened by something dangerous so that I could risk life, limb, and everything else for you. Nora breaks herself free from him and speaks firmly and emphatically. You should read your letters, Torval. No, no, not tonight. I just want to be here with you. <laughs> with the thought of your friend dying? Uh, no, no, you're right. It's affected both of us. Something ugly's come between us, Nora. This, these thoughts of death and decay. We, we have to try and free our minds of all that. Until then, we should stay in separate rooms. She puts her arms around his neck. Good night, Torval. Good night. He kisses her forehead. Good night, my little goldfinch. Sleep well. He takes his letters, goes into his office, and closes the door behind him. <laughs> Wild-eyed, Nora fumbles around, grabs Torvald's domino cloak, and throws it around herself. She then grabs her shawl and puts it over her head. <sighs> never see him again. Never, never, never. Never see the kids again either. Not them either. Never, never. Just me, yeah, I see black water in the bottomless. Ah! Only it was all over. He, he has it now. He's reading it. No, 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 not yet. Torvald. Goodbye to you and the kids. As she's about to rush out, Torvald throws his door open and stands there with a the paper in his hand. Nora! <laughs> what is this? Do you know what's in this letter? Yes, I do. Let me go. Let me get out. Torvald grabs her and holds her back. She tries to break free. Where are you going? You can't save me, Torvald. He stumbles backwards. Is this true? What he wrote here? Terrible. No, no. It's impossible. This can't be true. It is true. I have loved you more than anything in the world. Oh, don't come to me with dumb excuses. But Torvald! You unfortunate creature, what have you done? No, let me go. You shouldn't have to suffer for me. You shouldn't take on this burden alone. Enough with the comedy. He locks the door. You're going to stay here and give me an explanation. Do you understand what you've done? Answer me. Do you understand? She stares at him incessantly, a look of coldness growing in her face. Yes. Now I'm beginning to understand completely. He paces around the room. What a horrible awakening. All these eight years. The woman who was my pride and joy. A hypocrite. A liar. Worse, worse. A criminal. What a bottomless abyss of ugliness and disgrace. The shame. Oh, God, the shame. Nora remains silent, her eyes fixed on him. He stops in front of her. I should have suspected that something like this would happen. I should have seen it coming. All your father's frivolous ideals. Be quiet. You've inherited 
all of your father's frivolous ideals. No religion, no morals, no sense of duty. And now I'm being punished for turning a blind eye to him. I did it for you, and this? This is how you repay me? Yes, this is how. Now you have destroyed all my happiness. You've wasted my entire future for me. Oh God, that's awful to think about. I'm at the mercy of an immoral man. He can do whatever he wants to me, demand anything he wants from me, order and command me however he wants. I wouldn't dare say no. And I'm forced to sink to these miserable lows because one reckless woman. And I'm gone from this world. You'll be free. Oh, please, spare me the fake gestures. Your father always had plenty of those ready. What good would it do for me if you were gone from this world, as you say? Not even a little. He can make the whole thing public anyway, and if he does, then I'd be suspected of having been aware of your criminal act. People might even believe that I was behind the whole thing, that I put you up to it. And I have you to thank for all of this. The woman I've lifted up with my own hands throughout our whole marriage. Do you understand now what you've done to me? Yes. This is so unbelievable that I can't even understand it. I'll have to try and figure a way out anyway. Take off that shawl. Take it off now. I have to try and pacify him somehow. This thing must be kept quiet at all costs. And as far as you and I go, we'll have to make it look like nothing's changed between us. But only in the eyes of the world. You'll stay in my house, of course, but I won't allow you to raise the kids. I wouldn't risk trusting them to you. That I would have to say this to the woman that I've loved so much and whom I... St well, that's all in the past. From now on, there's no more talk of happiness, only of trying to save the remains, the stumps. The A bell rings in the foyer. What's this now? So late, can the most awful, can he? Hide yourself, Nora. Say you're sick. Nora stands, motionless. Torvald goes and unlocks the door to the foyer. Helena, half undressed, steps in and awkwardly tries to ignore the tense, uncomfortable atmosphere. Torvald glares at her while Nora looks away. She addresses Nora directly. A letter has arrived for the missus. Give it to me. He snatches the letter out of Helena's hands. She gives an unsure curtsy and steps back out into the foyer. Torvald slamming the door behind her. He stares at the envelope as he walks over to the lamp. Yes, it's from him. No, you won't get it. I'll read it myself. Then read. I barely have the nerve to. Maybe. We're just souls lost in the desert. The both of us. No. I have to know. He quickly tears open the letter and scans over a few lines, the expression on his face changing. He looks through another paper that was enclosed and cries out joyfully. <laughs> Nora looks at him inquisitively. Nora! N Nora! No, I, 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 I have to read it one more time. I, yes. Yes, it's, it's true! I'm saved! Nora, I'm saved! And me? Uh, you too, of course. We're, we're, we're both saved. You and I both. Look, look. He sent your bond back. 
he, he said he, he regrets and, and apologizes that, that a happy change in his life. Oh, who cares about that? We are saved, Nora. Nobody can do anything to you. Oh, Nora. Nora. Uh, no, no. First, I have to destroy this disgusting thing. Let's see. He takes a closer look at the bond. Uh, no. No, I don't even want to look at it. This whole thing will be nothing more than a nightmare to me. He tears up the bond in both letters, throws them all into the fireplace, and watches them burn. There. It's all gone. He said that since Christmas Eve, you've... These must have been three awful days for you, Nora. I have been fighting a tough battle these past three days. And agonized and saw no other way out except... No. No, we won't bring up all that ugliness. We'll only celebrate and repeat. It's over. It's over. Listen to me, Nora. You, you don't seem to get it. It is over. What's this? This stiff expression. That, now, poor little Nora. I definitely understand. You don't think you could allow yourself to believe that I really forgive you. But it's true, Nora. I swear to you, I forgive you everything. Because I know that what you did, you did out of love for me. Hmm. That is true. You have loved me as much as a wife should love her husband. You just lack the insight to judge the proper means to your ends. But do you think you're any less precious to me just because you don't understand how to act on your own? No. No. You can lean on me. I will advise you. I'll guide you. Actually, I wouldn't even be a man if this helpless femininity didn't make you twice as attractive in my eyes. Don't hold on to the harsh things I said in my initial shock when I thought everything was going to collapse in on me. I forgive you, Nora. I swear to you that I forgive you. Thank you for your forgiveness. She goes to the bedroom. Uh, no, stay. What are you doing in the alcove? Taking off my costume. He stands by the open door. It, yes. O okay. You do that. A and try. To, to calm down and, and regain your composure, my terrified little goldfinch. Rest easy now. I'll keep you safe under my wings. He paces up and down by the door. How lovely is our home, Nora. This is your shelter. This is where I'll keep you safe, like a hunted dove I rescued from the claws of a vicious hawk. It'll happen little by little. Sweetheart, believe me, tomorrow, everything will seem totally different to you. Soon, it'll all be back to the way things were. Before you know it, I won't even have to keep reminding you that I've forgiven you. You yourself will know it in your heart. How can you even think it would occur to me to reject you or even blame you for anything? You have no idea what a real man's heart is like, Nora. For a man, there's something so indescribably sweet and satisfying in knowing that he has forgiven his wife, forgiven her truly and with all his heart. She then, in a way, belongs to him twice. He's given her a whole new life, if you will, and she has, in, in a sense, uh, become both his wife and his child. And that's what you'll be to me after this, you confused, helpless little thing. Don't you worry about a thing, Nora. Just be open and honest with me. And I will serve as your conscience and your guide. What are you doing? No, not going to bed. You put on a new outfit? Nora steps out in her everyday clothing. 
Yes, Torvald, I put on a new outfit. But why n now, this late at- I won't be sleeping tonight. But sweetheart, it- She checks her watch. It's not so late yet. <sighs> Sit down, Torvald, you and I have a lot to talk about. She sits down at one side of the table. Nora, what is this? This stiff expression again. Sit down. It's going to take some time. I have a lot to talk to you about. He sits down at the opposite side of the table. You're scaring me, Nora. And I don't understand you. Now that's just it. You don't understand me. And I've never understood you either. Until tonight. No, don't interrupt me. You're going to listen to what I have to say. It's our day of reckoning, Torvald. What do you mean by that? She contemplates silently for a short moment. Isn't there one thing that seems off to you when we're sitting here like this? What would that be? We've been married for eight years now. Do you realize this is the first time the two of us, you and me, husband and wife, have had a serious conversation? <laughs> serious conversation? What does that mean? For eight consecutive years. No, no, longer than that. From the very beginning of our relationship, we have never said a single serious thing to each other on a single serious subject. Was I supposed to constantly talk to you about worries that you wouldn't have been able to help me with anyway? I'm not talking about worries. I'm saying that we've never really sat down and got to the bottom of anything together. But Nora, sweetheart, would that even have been appropriate for you? There you have it. You have never understood me. I've been mistreated, Torvald. First by Dad, and then by you. What? Uh, by us? Uh, by us, who, who have loved you more than anyone else in the world? You have never loved me. You only love the idea of being in love with me. Nora, are you even listening to what's coming out of your mouth? It's absolutely true, Torvald. When I was home with Dad, he told me his opinions about everything, and so I formed the same opinions. And if I had other ones, I kept them to myself because I wouldn't have liked it. He called me his baby doll, and he treated me the same way I would treat my dolls. And then I came to your house. Is that what you call getting married? I simply mean that I was passed from Dad's hands into yours. You arranged everything according to your taste, and so I acquired the same taste as you. I pretend to at least. I'm not sure, really. I think it's both. sometimes one, sometimes the other. When I look back on it, it seems to me that I had been living here like a, like a beggar, just hand to mouth. I existed only to perform tricks for you, Torvald. That's how you wanted it. You and Tad have committed a great sin against me. It's your fault that I've made nothing of myself. Nora, how ridiculous and ungrateful of you. Haven't you been happy here? No, I've never been happy. I, I thought I was, but I've never been. Not, not, not happy? No, just glad. You've always been so kind to me, but... Our home's been nothing more than a, a playroom. I've been your wife doll, just like at home I was dad's baby doll, and here the kids have been my dolls. I thought it was fun when you played with me, just like they think it's fun when I play with them. That's what our marriage has been like, Torvald. There is some truth to that, re regardless of how exaggerated and hysterical it may be. <laughs> But moving forward, it'll be different. Playtime's over. Now's the time for education. <clears throat> Whose education? Mine or the kids? And both yours and the kids, sweetheart. Sadly, Torvald, you're not the man to educate me on how to be a proper wife to you. How can you even say that? How, how am I even prepared to raise the kids? Uh, Nora! Didn't you say yourself a minute ago that you wouldn't risk trusting me to raise them? In a moment of anger, why would you even take that seriously? Yes, but you were still right. 
I'm not up to the task. There's another one I have to take on first. I have to try and educate myself. You're not the man to help me with that. I have to do it for myself. And, and that's why I'm leaving you now. What did you just say? I need to be completely alone if I want to understand myself and everything around me. That's, that's why I can't stay with you anymore. Nora. N Nora. I'll be leaving immediately. I'm, I'm sure Christine can take me in for the night. You're insane. I won't allow it. I forbid you. You can't forbid me anything anymore. I'll only take with me what belongs to me. I won't take anything from you. Not now. Not ever. What sort of insanity is this? Tomorrow I'm going home. I, I mean, to my old house. It'll be easier for me to find something to do there. You, you're just a blind, inexperienced thing. I have to go out and get experienced, Torvald. But to leave your home, your husband, and, and your children, and you don't even consider what people will say. I can't take that into account. I only know what's right for me. Oh, that's outrageous. <sighs> And so you'd neglect your most sacred duties? <laughs> what exactly do you consider my most sacred duties? Of course, I need to tell you that. Aren't they your duties to your husband and your children? I have other duties that are just as sacred. You do not. What duties would those be? The ones to myself. You are first and foremost a wife and a mother. I don't believe that anymore. I believe that I am first and foremost a human being, just as much as you are. At the very least, that I should try to be. I know, of course, that most people would agree with you, Torvald, and that those views are found in books, but I can't settle for what most people say or for what's found in books. I have to think these things through for myself and get to understand them. Don't you understand your place in your own home? Don't you have a reliable guide for these things? Don't you have a religion? <laughs> Torvald, I don't even know what religion really is. What are you saying? I don't know anything more than what Reverend Hansen said when I was getting ready for my confirmation. He told me that religion was this and that. When I get out away from all of this and I'm on my own, I'll have to look more into that too. I, I want to see if it's right, what Reverend Hansen said, or... At least if it's right for me. This is unheard of in a girl your age. But if religion can't set you straight, then let me at least see if you have some conscience. I, I assume you have some moral sense. O or uh, tell me, maybe you don't have any. Yeah, Torvald, that's not an easy question to answer. I really don't know that either. <laughs> I'm pretty confused about these things. I only know that I have a very different opinion on this than you. I also hear that the laws are not at all what I had thought, but for them to be considered fair, I can't wrap my head around that. So a woman doesn't have the right to spare her old dying father or even to save her husband's life. I don't believe in that. You talk like a child. You, you don't understand the society you live in. No, I don't. But now I want to try. I have to find out who's right. Society or me. You're sick, Nora. You, you, you have a fever. I, I almost think you're completely out of your mind. I have never felt as clear and confident as I do now. And you're clear and confident about leaving your husband and your kids. Yes, I am. Then there's only one possible explanation. What's that? You don't love me anymore. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Nora, how can you even say that? Believe me, it hurts me so much, Torvald, but you've always been so kind to me. I, I can't do anything about it. 
I don't love you anymore. Are you clear and confident about that too? Yes. Perfectly clear and confident. That's why I don't want to be here anymore. And can you explain to me exactly how I lost your love? Yes, I can. It was tonight when the divine didn't happen. Because then I saw that you weren't the man I had imagined. The divine? I I explain yourself more clearly. I, I really don't understand you at all. I've waited so patiently for eight years now. God, I realize that the divine doesn't just happen in everyday life. And this horrible disaster fell on me and I felt so incredibly sure the divine is finally happening now. When Nils's letter was out there, I, it never even crossed my mind that you'd just accept his demands. I was so incredibly sure that instead, you'd say to him, make this public for the whole world to see. And then when he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. But what, what happens in this scenario after I freely offer up my wife to be disgraced? And then when he did. I was so incredibly sure you'd come forward and take the blame for everything and say that you're the guilty one. Nora! You're probably thinking I'd never let you sacrifice yourself like that for me. Of course I wouldn't, but then... But then, here's the dilemma. What weight would my words have carried against yours? No one would have believed me and you would have needlessly suffered because of what I was sure had been your endless love for me. That was the divine I had nervously hoped for. And preventing it was why I wanted to end my life. I would have been more than glad to work day and night for you, Nora. Suffer through pain and hardships for you. But no man would sacrifice his honor for the one he loves. Hundreds of thousands of women have done that. You think and talk like a child. <laughs> Maybe, but you don't think and talk like the man I would want to share my life with. As soon as your fear was over, not fear of what had threatened me, but of what might have happened to you. When the whole danger was over, then for you it was like, like nothing had happened at all. <laughs> Just like before, I was your little goldfinch, your doll, which you now had to handle twice as gently since she was so... Fragile and weak. It's horrible. It was then that it dawned on me that for eight years, I had been living with a total stranger that I'd given him through children. <laughs> Yet I can't think about it or I'd tear myself apart. I see it. I do see it. There's definitely an abyss that has come between us. But Nora, don't you think it's possible to fill it back up? The way I am now, I can't be a wife to you anymore. I have the strength to become a different man. Maybe if... <laughs> If your doll's taken away from you. But to be separate, to, to, to separate from you. No. No, Nora, I, I can't even imagine. She goes out into the foyer and comes back with her coat, hat, and a small bag, which she sets on a chair by the table. That makes it all the more inevitable. Nora, Nora, n not, not now. Wait until tomorrow. She puts on her coat. I can't spend the night in a strange man's house. But, but, but can't we live here like brother and sister? She puts on her hat. You know very well that wouldn't last long. She wraps the shawl around her shoulders. <sighs> Goodbye, Torvald. I don't want to see the kids. I, I know they're in better hands than mine. In the way I am now, I, I can't be anything to them. But someday, Nora? Someday? <laughs> How would I know? I don't even have a clue what'll happen to me. 
but, but you're, you're my wife, not now and regardless of what happens. Listen, Torvald, when a wife leaves her husband's house, like I'm doing now, I've heard that by law, he's released from any and all obligations to her. In any case, I release you from any obligation. You shouldn't feel committed to anything, and neither should I. There must be full freedom on both sides. Look, here's your ring back. Give me mine. That too? That too. Here. They exchange rings. Well, yes, now it's all over. I'm leaving the keys here. The maids know everything that needs to be done around the house better than I do. Tomorrow, after I've left town, um, Christine will come here to pack up my own things that I brought with me from home. I'll, I'll send for them. All over. All over! Nora, will you never think of me again? I know that I'll often think of you and children. This house. Can I write to you? No. Never. You're... You're not allowed to do that. But at least let me send you... Nothing! Nothing! Help you, if you need it. No. Don't... I don't accept anything from strangers. Nora, can I never be anything more than a stranger to you? She picks up her bag. It's horrible. That would require the most divine thing of all. Name this most divine thing. Both you and I would have to change so much that... It's horrible. I don't believe in anything divine anymore. But I want to believe. Tell me. Change so much that... That our coexistence would become a real marriage. Goodbye. She walks out through the foyer. Torvald sinks down on a chair and buries his face in his hands. Nora. Nora! He looks around the room and stands up. Empty. She's not here anymore. A hope flashes across his face. The most divine thing of all. The sound of a street door slamming shut is heard from below. Thank you.